NASCAR has opted to start this race early, try to be able to get as much of this race in, hopefully the entire 500 laps. Take a look at our starting grid, a very interesting qualifying grid, Ned and Benny. Yeah, Ted Musgrave on the pole again here for the third time this year. He won poles twice at Richmond, Virginia. Jeff Bodine on the outside pole. And Bodine has five pole positions this year. NASCAR will run a couple extra laps because these, car these cars use a very hard brake pad. So they need to get that pad warm so the cars will start. These drivers right now are right in that brake with a left foot and what they call bedding the brakes or seating the brakes in. 36 cars will qualify for the field. We'll start today. A number of cars, as you watch, our starting grid did not make the starting lineup, included among those Loy Allen, Dave Marcus, Tim Fidoa, Bobby Hillen, and Jeremy Mayfield. Those five cars did not qualify and had to go home. And we see the cars weaving back and forth, back and forth, trying to get all the buildup off the tires. It did rain here at Martinsville last night. This racetrack is slippery, very slippery. When they go down in turn one, they'll need all the grip they can possibly get. Then it seems like the top of every show we talk about tires. I don't think tires is going to be a big problem here today, and everybody is happy about that. They should be able to go, most of them, a full fuel tank run without having to change tires. Of course, it'll be 140, 150 laps. And that pace car normally would run 35 miles an hour. Right now, he's leading these cars 60, 70 miles an hour, getting the cars up to speed fast enough that you're able to get some heat in the brake pads. Because brakes is a big factor here at the Martinsville Speedway. Instead of tires, it's brakes, rear gearing, and you got to have a lot of patience on this racetrack, too. Let's check in the pits with one of our pit announcers, John Kernan. Jerry, remember last week at Dover, Jeff Burton slammed the wall hard. He was very, very sore all week. In fact, until this morning, he was bruised all over his body, almost from head to toe. The soreness is not a problem today. The big problem for him, he had a concussion because he's been with the concussion. He's feeling very, very tired. It didn't affect him in qualifying. He qualified third. But for 500 laps today, he's going to have to really pace himself. And a surprise to see him here? Well, yeah, maybe because of the, the concussion and the bruises. A surprise sitting next to him, John Andretti, the STP Pontiac, qualified fourth. Robbie Loomis says the communication between he and his driver getting better every week. In fact, he says he will win a pole before this year is out. Let's go further down pit road to Bill Weber. Thank you, John. Now, one other story injury-wise to watch for is Dale Jarrett. He has a hairline fracture of his left wrist. It is wrapped in a cast. Dale told me this morning it is sore and very uncomfortable. The beginning of the race, he'll try and use both hands on the wheel. But after the race strings out in the middle portion, he'll try and drive primarily with the right hand. Then down the stretch, when the checkered flag is on the line, he'll go back to both hands. Dale does have some questions if he'll be able to go the distance today. One other fan favorite to watch, Daryl Waltrip another good qualifying run he has 11 wins at this track he qualified 11th today take a look at our field today there are 19 Fords 12 Chevrolets five Pontiacs no championship provisionals 31 cars on good years five on Hoosiers you've already heard Ned Jarrett and Benny Parsons tell you that tires should not be a factor today although both companies brought a different race tire than they've ever run here before a brand new tire Great crowd on hand. Glad to have you with us here for today's Goodies 500. Tremendous crowd at Martinsville Speedway as green flag flies. Six events left in the 1994 Winston Cup Tour. Everybody being very careful here on these first few laps. Dale Earnhardt in particular, he's starting back in 20th place today. He's leading the Winston Cup point standings. Although he set on the pole, Ted Musgrave did not lead the first lap. His eighth start here, he is yet to lead a lap at Martinsville Speedway. We have a camera on top of Ted Musgrave's Family Channel 4 today as he watches Jeff Bodine lead him. Now John Andretti is trying to be passed by Jeff Burton. You know, Mark Martin is not off to a good start down on the inside. As we see some real battles up front as Gordon takes over, I mean, Burton takes over the third position. Mark Martin's down on the inside. And he's holding up cars behind him, which is unusual. But a lot of cars have passed him on the outside. There he is. There's Mark still staying down on the inside, but a number of cars have passed him on the outside. Now it looks like he's gotten up in the roof. Maybe it's... Maybe it was not a problem, but he was not running as fast early as he should have been, or he wanted to. He started fifth. He's now back in ninth position behind Kenny Wallace and right in front of Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader. Oh, how 
Tom Petty almost gets spun out by the four car. Sterling Marlin got alongside, thought he was going to take the spot away. And Kyle did a great job to save that car. And there's Earnhardt, our points leader, the Goodrich Chevrolet, trying to go by Kyle Petty on the outside. A little unusual to see passing here at the Martinsville Speedway on the outside. Yes. Dan Musgrave really putting a challenge on Jeff Bodine. Now the 16th race of the season that Jeff Bodine has led, and he is getting a heck of a challenge from Musgrave. And these two cars have put some distance on the third place car, probably 15, 20 car lengths. There, once again, we see Earnhardt trying to go by Kyle Benny on the outside. That is a tough chore to try to get by up there. You can see they do a little bit of bumping. And Earnhardt is already up to about 13th, 14th spot. That's 13th position right now. Kyle Petty is in 12th spot. Schrader was in 11th. And Schrader trying to get alongside Mark Martin. Rusty Wallace has already been able to get by Mark. You know, in practice here on Friday, Benny, Earnhardt was one of the fastest cars in practice. They thought they had a shot at the pole. He wound up in 20th place, but he was the first car out to qualify. The track had sat here for an hour, and the sun had shined, was shining down on it, and the track was very slick at that time, and I think that that hurt his chances in qualifying. You know, Dad, two weeks ago, he came here and tested two days with that car to try to get the car exactly right for this short track, so that's probably a bit of a surprise at how poorly he qualified. Let's check in with John Kerner. Jerry, Jerry, it was a surprise to everyone down here in the to see how poorly Dale Earnhardt qualified in qualifying 20th. After his qualifying run, he came back in and told Richard Childress and Andy Petrie, he said, guys, I didn't drive it the same way that I drove it in practice. I might have tried just a little bit too hard. If I would have driven it the same way I did in practice, we might have been on the pole. Jeff Gordon trying to get alongside John Andretti in that 43 car going in turn three. Some pretty serious bumping. Both guys able to maintain control. Jeff Bodine leading, Ted Musgrave is second, Jeff Burton third, Andretti, John Andretti is fourth, Jeff Gordon fifth, Dale Jarrett sixth, Bill Elliott seventh, Kenny Wallace making a good run there, trying to move on the inside of Bill Elliott. He's running in eighth place. Watch Kenny Strader make a move inside of Mark Martin down in turn one. Martin gives him plenty of room, and Strader will make the pass as you ride along in Mark Martin's in-car camera. And I'll tell you that Kyle Petty has already made a get by Mark, as we see Sterling Marlin also going by the Kodak Film Chevrolet. Martin's obviously got a problem. He started in fifth spot, and right now he has been shuffled back to 12th position as cars continue to go by on the inside. Yeah. We are told that he hasn't said anything on the radio yet about any kind of a problem. Of course, he's been pretty busy out there, hasn't had much time to talk. But Mark is uh, very observant of his race car. He, he knows how he wants the car to feel. If it's not feeling exactly the way he wants it to, he'll drive it. However, it needs to be driven to run as fast as it will go and still stay in a reasonable contention. He is currently in 15th position. There is the 16th place car, Darrell Waltrip, who's had an incredible run the last six events, including a third place finish last week at Dover, Delaware. Let's check in the pits with John Kernan. Well, Mark Martin continues to drop back. He's complained now, finally on the radio, that the car is very, very tight. In fact, Steve Mill just came over, checked the air pressures on the tires that they started with, and for the next set of tires, he's made his decision on what he's going to do with the air pressure when they finally get him to make a pit stop so he can try and loosen that car up. Now, Jeff Bodine leading... There was a lot of concern among the Hoosier teams this morning, Bodine's included. What they had seen is considerable tire wear on the right side, and after about 40, 50 laps, they really dropped off on their lap times. The Goodyear teams were fairly consistent. One team, in fact, told me they could go 160 laps on a set of tires and drop off very, very little. So keep an eye on Jeff Bodine. He may experience some tire wear problems and start losing some speed in about 20 laps. Thank you, John. We'll keep an eye on that. Of course, Jeff Bodine on the Hoosier tires. And here's an interesting battle, both for points and on the racetrack. Well, I tell you, the fans are loving it. They got Earnhardt bumped to uh, rescue Wallace a little bit a lap or two ago, and they are going wild in the stands as they watch this battle between two of their heroes. That's for ninth and tenth position. So we're in the early laps of the Goodies 500 here at Martinsville Speedway. Jeff Bodine is our early leader. Back with more NASCAR Winston Cup racing action right after this.
welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia. We started the race in a hurry because of threatening rain showers in the area. I'm Jerry Punch, along with Ned Jarrett and Benny Parsons, our usual crew here. Bob Jenkins still recovering back home from back surgery. Bobby, wish you well. Come back in a hurry. Now, rain showers in the area, that's the reason we had to get this race started. We want to get this race finished if we possibly can. If we possibly can. We've got a very special guest we're get, we have on the telephone right now we want to talk to, and it is a tremendous thrill to be able to talk to this young man. Benny? Ernie Irvin, how you doing? Doing really good, Benny. Um, really appreciate all the, the support and everything, that, all the prayers and uh, everything that's been going along here. Uh, really that 28 car is running pretty good today, Ernie. It sure is. Um, I talked to Kenny right before the race and told him to stay after it the whole the whole day. So uh, he's doing a good job. Well, I tell you, you did that, did it last year here in that 28 car, pulled off the victory, and uh, I'm sure you could give him a couple of tips. Yeah, you know. I, Kenny's a, a great driver, and um, he's just got a little bit to learn about wins the cup race. Ernie, it's, this, is, this is Jerry. It's incredible, your recovery, what you have come come back from. Uh, absolutely remarkable. What, what's ahead for Ernie Irvin? How does the rehab look? Well, the rehab looks pretty good. Um, you know, it's just going to take some time, and, and uh, you know, I, I got a little bit of eye injury and, and stuff like that. It's just going to take some time, and we have no idea how long it's going to take, but... Uh, I really look for you know, being back at Daytona, and hopefully I can do that. Back racing in Daytona? Yep. Oh, oh the eight car gets around. John Andretti gets in back of Jeff Burton. Did you see that, Ernie? Yeah. All right. John Andretti laying that bump to him. <laughs> Tell you. And the caution, no caution flag. Still no caution flag. Looks like the eight car is going to get going again here. Whoa. Wow. Ernie, is this, is this, we're going we're gonna to show you a replay, Ernie. Is this typical Martinsville racing? It's so close here. Can you, it's almost impossible to avoid these things. Well, it really is. You know, um, the, the 43 car, he was down going under him, and um, you know, there's not, not nothing that the, the eight car could do. He just never saw him, and um, that's just part of racing. Ernie, we were going to ask you if we had time at the beginning of our telecast. Is there anybody that right out here, I mean, how do you stop Bernhardt? He's just been on a roll this year toward his seventh championship. Well, you know, uh, the bad thing is, is um, I got injured, so, um, so I don't know if anybody can stop him right now. Dale's been really tough all year. Um, you know, we had the, the closest battle with him, and uh, you know, it was a great battle, but uh, he's just going to be tough the rest of the year. Uh-oh, and he gets the bump from Kenny Wallace, and he, look, he did a 360 and kept going still, no cost to play. He only lost one spot, I believe. Still out there racing hard, still no caution flag. Kyle Petty is going to get by him. Kyle's running off the good here today in the Mellow Yellow Pontiac. He sure is. How about that move, Ernie? Yeah, I gotta see that one. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, we got a wreck down at turn one again. We got three or four cars. Derek now Coke. the caution is out. Now the caution flag flies, and uh, Ernie, it's Martinsville Speedway. Eight cars trying to get his lap back. Jeff Burton trying to get his lap back from he lost a lap in that spin. He's going to do it coming off of the turn four. Good break for him. And Ernie, here's what happened a minute ago between the car you've been driving and old number three. Bernard goes on the inside of Kenny. He takes a position away. Now Kenny tries to get back to the inside and just bumped Bernard. And watch this, Ernie. Just showers on the gas. Spins it on around, keeps going. He, he's real fortunate right there. You know, um, he, he uh, missed a good chance to knock the wall down. But um, <laughs> um, I imagine uh, Earnhardt's uh, temper got a little, little carried away right there. We'll try a different angle. Oh, here's the other wreck. I'm sorry. This is the one between Rick Mass, Derek Cope, Mike Wallace, and the 90 cars involved. Also, the 26 car has some damage to those of the Quaker State car. Ernie, you told me the other day that you, I better hope you get better because you're going to take my job. You're going to no, come up. I don't plan on doing that, Benny. You're um, going to stick to your job, right? I, I plan on sticking to mine. Hey, you already tell, let's go to John, say, let's go to John Kernan. Okay, let's go to John Kernan. <laughs> Thank you, Ernie. Great to hear from you. Jeff Burton just got his lap back, comes in, changed right side tires only. He was going to be at the tail end of the field anyway, so the only car that we've seen here, no, also Lake Speed is on pit road, but uh, he had nothing to lose by coming in, changing right side tires. 
they had to pit for right side tires the first time, guys, because the caution car was just coming around turn four. So Jeff Burton will be back on pit road another time, the next time by, to take on the left side tires. They also loosened the car up just a little bit. Hey, Ernie. Yeah. Won't you say we'll be back after these commercials? We'll be back after these commercials. All right. Speedway, our coverage continues with the Goodies 500. We, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Jerry Punch, Bill Weber, John Kernan, and Ernie Irvin on via telephone from his home in Concord, North Carolina. And moments ago, we had an incident, and Ernie Irvin, this is uh, what happened up in turn three. Dale Earnhardt went on the inside of the 28 car, and, and Kenny hit him just a little bit, spun him around. He made a complete 360, kept going. No problem there from Mike Wallace's view now. Now Mike Wallace will go down to turn one. There's going to be another wreck. Yeah, he just saw that one up there with Earnhardt. Well, he got involved in that one a little bit. Ernie, that is... That is typical Martinsville short track fun. Yeah, I tell you. Uh, and we, we, we love having you on the broadcast, but we look forward to having you back out here in the race car. We wish you the best and uh, come back real soon. Hey, why don't you stay and watch the telecast a little bit, and uh, if something happens, we'll dial you back up and get your opinion. Okay, I'll be here. Okay, Ernie, best of luck. Godspeed and get well. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Ernie. Ernie Urban. You better believe it. We miss you big time, big guy. And he's back recovering at home with his family in Concord, North Carolina. And I got to believe he's going to be back here real soon. I firmly believe that. Let's check in the pits with John Kernan. Jerry, Benny, and Ned are all the time talking about buildup on the tires and how you have to see the drivers come in and scuff them off just so they don't go flying into turn one and wind up in the wall. Let me show you what this, what the buildup is. Take a putty knife, we scratch along, look at all that. No, that's not tread from the tire coming off. That is rubber that has built up on the tire. So they, it is very important that they get this rubber buildup off the tires or when they go into turn one, it'll scrub off automatically and they'll hit the wall. We'll be back after this. Back in Martinsville Speedway, the green flag wave just half a lap ago, and Jeff Bodine picks up where he left off here on lap number 43. He leads Ted Musgrave and a host of others out of turn four. John Andretti is running in third place. Jeff Gordon is fourth. Rusty Wallace fifth. Dale Jarrett sixth. Bill Elliott seventh. Kenny Wallace eighth. Kyle Petty is ninth. And Ken Schrader is in tenth place. The 32 car you see on the inside there. And I left out Dale Earnhardt. He's, he's in front of Kyle Petty there, so uh, forgive me. He's in that group. I'm sorry to mention Dick Trickle's car, the 32 car, is a lap down. He cut a tire and had to make those giggle pit stop just prior to that last caution flag. In fact, he is two laps down. Let's check in the pits with Bill Weber. Okay, Jerry, a couple of items down here. Kenny Wallace says the rear end is loose on the Haviland Ford. They're going to drop their air pressure a pound when they do pit. Another story developing is Ricky Rudd. He's qualified 13th. He's lost a couple of spots, but he has told his crew chief, Billy Engel, that the track is coming to him. They think it'll be very strong here this afternoon. Rick Mast has some front end damage along with Brett Bodine. A little bit of beat and banging, Benny. Oh, yeah, that's, we're, we're going to see a lot of that here at Martinsville. We see some damage on Michael Waltrip's nose. That Just a lap, lap ago, Benny, here, uh, Rick Mast went on the inside. There were three deep. Joe Nemechek in the middle, Michael Waltrip on the outside. And Rick, I think, is going to slide right up into Michael Waltrip. Yes, he does. And we were lucky not to have another wreck there. Rick got down on the curbing down on the inside, but under control and everything's okay now. And Rick Mast is falling behind those two cars both Michael Walter and Joe Nemechek. Now there's our leader of the race, the seven car, the Exide battery car, Jeff Bodine. At second, Ted Musgrave, and John Andretti is third. Take a look at our field summary, top five. Rusty Wallace now being shown in fifth position behind Jeff Gordon. Earnhardt up to ninth spot after starting back in 20th. This is the camera from the back bumper of Ted Musgrave's family channel car. What a job Robbie Loomis, the crew, have done for the STP Pontiac and John Andretti. Qualifying fourth here. He led his first laps in that car last week at Dover. 
Boy, I tell you, Earnhardt and Bill Elliott are surrounded by Wallace's here. That's Mike Wallace there on the outside in car number 90 and Kenny on the inside. Earnhardt was trying to pass Kenny on the outside, but Mike was up there and uh, they're trying to put a lap on him. He's already a lap down, so they're just trying to go on by him and Earnhardt had to back off and get down into the lower group. And Mike Wallace has new tires. One reason it's so difficult to get by him is Mike Wallace has new tires. Kenny Wallace and Bill Earnhardt did not stop. They stood on the racetrack to maintain the track position. And Kenny finally makes the pass, goes on by the Havlin car. And there goes Earnhardt. And Kyle Petty. Now Kenny Schrader will move to the inside, try to go by the Mike Wallace car. Derek Cope in the car number 12 is there. Now here's a battle heating up closer toward the front. Battle for third spot. Jeff Gordon, as you watch, that's fourth position, rather. Jeff Gordon in the car number 24 with the car Chevrolet. And Rusty Walls are fifth place runner. And right behind him is Dick Trickle. Now, Trickle also has on new tires. He, he is a lap down, but he is faster than these other cars. He's coming up there now. He wants to pass Rusty Wallace. But Rusty wants to stay on that inside group if he possibly can. Dick would like to pass all five of those cars in front of him. Get, oh, and Mark Martin gets spun out by Bobby Labonte coming off the second corner. Mark tries to hold it on the inside. A couple of cars go around him as the caution comes out once again. The leader is now coming back to one. Martin will have to hustle not to get lapped. And he gets the car refired and pulled back down the back straightaway. But, and he will not lose a lap, but the caution will come out for the second time today. You know, Mark Martin's car, John Turnham reported, was very tight. He went down in the corner. Looks like he got a little bit loose. And when he did, Bobby Labonte ran in the back of him. And around went Mark. He went over the curb. So he might have, there might be some damage to the front suspension. Might have knocked the toe in out just a little bit. But I'm sure now that Mark is the rear of the field, he'll go into the pits. They'll change four tires and adjust. Everybody the else is coming in, too. Oh. Leaders on pit road. Here is Bodine, Musgrave, Andretti, Gordon, Wallace, Elliott. Let's go down to Bill Weber. It's four tires and gas for the Miller Genuine Craft Ford of Rusty Wallace. He hasn't had much to say to his crew. He's happy with the car, the way the car has been running. A little slow on the track on this side, but this is one of the fastest teams in the pitch. Rusty Wallace just about to leave. The Miller Genuine Craft Ford is down and away to John Kernan. Left side tires going on Jeff Bodine as Rusty Wallace wins the race out of pit road. Jeff Gordon right behind. Jeff Bodine looks like he's going to be third in line. They did not make any chassis adjustments on the car. And let's check in the back pit. There's some work going on. The mining can discount muffler Chevrolet. That's our fly camera. Brand new camera instigated today. It's a camera up over the race car, remotely controlled. And there is Joe Nemechek down in the way. Doug Reichert signaling to his crew there. As they change right side tires. Here's Darrell Waltrip in the Western Auto Chevrolet, winning his active driver here at Martinsville, 11 career victories. So did Daryl stay out and lead the lap? I, I was wondering if he did if he did that. We were watching all those pit stops. He might have stayed out there to lead the lap. He's very savvy on that kind of thing. He's going to give up a lot of track position, although he was, he was back there pretty far. But uh, those five bonus points could help a lot. Well, that, they're showing him a lap down, Jerry, aren't they? Huh? And showing Daryl Walter a lap down right now. We'll check, recheck the NASCAR scoring. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, well Darrell Waltrip did pit. The only problem was he couldn't get into it. He missed his pit. That's a problem here at Martinsville we've had in the past. We expected it to occur today, but usually not to a veteran like Waltrip. So Darrell Waltrip, who qualified 11th, said he had a strong car, now finds himself a lap down because he couldn't get to his pit. Here's a replay of what happened to DW a minute ago. Watch the top of your screen. You see how jammed it is in the pits. He comes in. There's no way he can get in the pit, so he has no choice but to go back around the racetrack. And he has to come in the next lap. But that shouldn't put him a lap down, though. And I think scoring is just behind the lap. And let's take a look through Mark Martin's in-car camera about what happened just a moment ago. He's one of those drivers trying to pass Mike Wallace. And there is where he got tapped, I guess, from the rear. You know, I said that the car was extremely loose. Well, the line he took down the front straightaway, it looked like he had a flat tire before he actually went in the corner down there. 
under caution for the second time today here in the early laps of the Goodies 500 at Martinsville Speed. Back with more right after this. Stay with us. Garth Brooks Collection, Garth's Favorites, is available now at McDonald's. Each full-length CD is unbelievably priced at just $5.99. Each cassette, $3.99. When you buy any extra value meal or large sandwich, hurry to McDonald's. They're going fast. Introducing Ford. Laps of caution and Hut Strickland and the Smoking Joes. Ford Thunderbird is our leader. Right behind him is Lake Speed. Sterling Marling is third. Neither of those cars made a pit stop during this last caution. They had made pit stops during the other caution, so they stayed out there this time to get the track position, so they're up there now in the lead. Rusty Wallace was actually the first car to come out of the pits of those that, that did pit. And there, Sterling Marlin takes over the second place. He wants to get up there and lead a lap if he possibly can. Take a look at the restart. I'm sorry, Jerry, the restart was a mess. Here we see the 12 cars trying to get a lap back. That's Derek Cope, also Dick Trickle. Makes some contact with a 15 car, and we see Sterling Mall and Rusty Wallace all heading for the outfield trying to dodge the wreck that they thought was going to happen. Now, there are two cars that are out front, Dick Trickle and Derek Cope. They are at the tail end of the lead lap. They said, oh, boy, there's Oh, and the eight car just blew up. Going down the front straightaway, heavy smoke out of that car as he loses an engine just in turn one. And I doubt the car will be able to roll, Well, Well, he tries to keep the car rolling slowly out of turn two. Jeff Burton has yet no yellow flag. He pulls it across the racetrack to the inside. And now Doyle Ford, yes, will wave the yellow flag. Caution for the third time today. Break for those two cars, the 32 and the 12. Both are going to get a lap back from our leader. Here we see those cars coming off the corner. And there is our leader, the 23 car of Hutt Strickland. Strickle and Coke getting their lap back, and there's Strickland with Sterling Marlin right behind. We need to, to uh, set the record straight on Darrell Walter, man. Yeah, he, he did not lose a lap for a moment. The scoring system here was showing him a lap down, but it was just during the caution there as cars were pitting and coming in and out that it showed him that way. But he, Darrell Walter, he is in the lead lap, so fans don't get uh, uh, alarmed about the fact that we wondered if he did lose that lap. He did not. Now, we're going to watch the Mark Martin spin once again from Terry Labonte's car. This is the Kellogg's car. The power roll in car camera. Watch as Bobby Labonte touches Mark Martin. This is going down the front straight, straight away. See Mark, how he got the car out of shape, like he has some kind of problem. And we could not see the contact, but I did see the contact. There was some between the 22 and the 6, but as you saw Mark, as he came off turn four, it looked like something was wrong with the car. And now he is making an unscheduled pit stop. Bill Weber is there. Well, I'm with Jeff Burton, who is obviously out of the race. Jeff, what happened? I guess it broke a crankshaft or broke a rod or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, something let go just all of a sudden in the engine. Uh, Andretti and I got together early, and uh, I, didn't, I just didn't see him down there. I think I came down on him and got us in a little bit of bad position. But we were, had gotten back OK. We were, we were going to be OK just to be able to ride. But, uh, we don't have many motor problems. We must have had a part failure, just a rod broke. Race conditions out there today? Well, it's a little bit slippery to start with, but the track's going to get good. It's a good day for racing here. I uh, just need to get some rubber down on the racetrack. Once they do that, it'll be in good shape. How you feeling, Jeff? Obviously, the rough ride last week. Well, I don't feel too good right now. Uh, I'd feel a lot better if this was lap 500, but it's not, and we'll just uh, get after him again next week. Okay, that's Jeff Burton. He's challenging for the Rookie of the Year award, leading in that points race, but this could be a big blow to that championship dash. And for the second week in a row, misfortune for Jeff Burton. You saw a moment ago that horrifying crash on lap 190 at Dover, Delaware. He was leading the race, hit the outside wall, exploded into flames, spent two hours in the infield infirmary. Certainly uh, not a good couple of weeks for Jeff Burton. Let's check in with John Kearney. Jerry, Mark Martin was on pit road for an unscheduled stop. He made some contact out there on the racetrack. They had to pull the right front fender away, check that tire out to make sure it had not been cut down. They also took a round of wedge out of the car to try and loosen it up. Remember, he's complained of a tight race car the first, since the first part of the race. Indeed, they make adjustments there and also on the Darrell Waltrip car as we are under caution here at Martinsville Speedway. Signal one lap to go. In park camera looking at Mark Martin as he prepares to get started. Uh oh, Jeff Burton gets a tough break today in our NASCAR rookie points. Joe Nemechek still out there, and we can see that Burton only has a 12-point lead on Nemechek. There's our five leading contenders, and also some more rookies this year: Jeremy Mayfield, Lloyd Allen, and Ward Burton. And Jeremy and Lloyd Allen, neither one of those cars made the field here at Martinsville. There's Steve Grissom, 
And Grissom's been running pretty well here lately, then. Yes, he has. He's had two good top ten finishes in the last couple of races. And he likes the Martinsville Speedway here, too. And we told you Darrell Waltrip in the pits. They put a rubber spacer in the right rear to try to adjust the handling on that car as we get set to go back to green flag racing. Dick Trickle down on the inside here again. He was two laps down before he made that one up, so he still has one to go. And there's Rick Mast also a lap down in the one car, trying to get by leg speed, get up front, hopefully get one of his laps back. Or his one lap back. I guess he's a lap down, yes. Morgan Shepard to the 21 car. Jeff Gordon, that's Jeff in the 24 car. They are fifth and sixth. 21 car is fifth, the 24 is sixth. They, behind them is the car that led the early laps, Jeff Bodine. The Exide Battery is in seventh spot. Rusty Wallace looked on the inside of Lake Speed coming off turn two. No room there. He'll try it again as he comes off four. And he is trying it, trying it. Still no room there. It is so difficult to pass. Oh, and Earnhardt got to make some contact, and he spins. Earnhardt spins right in front of the traffic. And so far, he hasn't hit a thing. Puts it in reverse, waits for the traffic to clear, and away he goes. No caution. We well, understand that maybe Rick Mast had a, might have had a yes. You can see that right front tire is flat on the Skull Classic Ford. I guess that. Uh, yeah, he went in the corner and went straight, just like that, and Earnhardt was on the outside of him, not knowing that Rick Mast had a flat tire. And now Mast is hung on the outside again. And here's a replay of what happened a minute ago down in turns one and two between Mast and Earnhardt. You see, Jeff Bodine got tapped just a little bit by Rick Mast there, but he was able to avoid it. And yeah. Jeff Bodine spins while we're watching the replay. I'm sorry. Well, there is action. You can see Rick Mast hit Earnhardt there. Earnhardt tried to save it, but he got up in the marbles, as we call it, the loose stuff, went around. He's still in the lead lap, but he's way back towards the back. Caution is out now as a result of the Jeff Bodine spin. There's Bodine has gotten the car right. Now, he spun in exactly the same spot that Earnhardt spun a minute ago. And there we see Bodine going around. And watch Bill Elliott, and he goes on the outside of him and gets... He goes by. Jeff Bodine had to sit there while all the cars went by, and Jeff drove across the grass, but it still didn't do any good. He still was lapped by Hud Strickland. Now, there's the damage to the left side of the Goodrich Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt. Some sheet metal damage, and I don't wonder the crew now has the pit board out, expecting to see Earnhardt on pit road. Most of these cars will again come down. Some of the cars will again come down. He's at the end of the, of the line, so he's not going to lose one thing by making a pit stop. Darrell Walter Band. Mark Martin come down pit road. There you can see Mark in the sixth car working his pits. Darren Hart pits on down. He's in the very last pit. First turn. Let's go to the pits and John Kirk. Dale Earnhardt will be in for a left side tire change this time by. They're also having to pull the left front fender out from behind the wheel. It has been bent in and it was rubbing the left front tire. But Earnhardt sitting patiently here on pit road. Also a little damage to the nose around the grill area. But they get the fender pulled away. Left side tires. He is out in 14.1 seconds. Well, that's why they changed the left side tires as opposed to going to the right side. They needed to repair that damage so they could do both at the same time. In fact, they needed to get the tire off so they could get in there and, and push that uh, sheet metal out. Chances are he'll come back in the next time and take on right side tires. So you're exactly right, Ned. He comes back down pit road. And you see him come flying around and just something jam on the brakes. Well, it's 35 miles an hour, and he comes slowly down the pit area. It must be an eternity point into that pit road or the other. He will come, and as you said, Ned, it will change right side tires. Man. Sorry, Ned. He has nothing to lose, as you pointed out there a moment ago. He's the tail end of the field anyway, so everything that they can do to that car right now is what they need to do with fresh tires. You know, he's uh, possibly be in the lead like Cut Strickland is right now. Well, that's right, because it looks like the tires, the new tires, is not the huge advantage that we've seen. Like in Darlington, a new tire was two, three seconds a lap better than a used tire. But it looks like here at Martinsville that a used tire is just about as good as a new tire. Right. Well, under caution for the fourth time today here at Martinsville Speedway. 
in the 39th annual Goodies 500. Back with more after this. It's gone green back at Martinsville Speedway. Hutch Strickland was the leader, but there he sits in turn one. He was tapped on the restart, loops it around. Now gets it righted and going, but there is no caution flag. Jeff Bodine, we saw him spin. Jeff Ford with the caution. He was on the inside of Hutch Strickland on the restart. And they made some contact. Watch here. Bodine on the inside. Hutch Strickland on the outside. And watch as he go down in turn one. A little bit of bump. Around goes Hutt. And that was the only car that spun. It was a one-car spin. Now the Bodine brothers, Jeff and Brett, are out in front of the leader, who is now late speed, and uh, they're in the lead lap, but almost a lap down. This is Rusty Wallace watching late speed from Rusty Wallace's car as Rusty tries desperately to get the lead. He tried on the outside. That didn't work too well. Just not good enough right now for Rusty to get by. And we are told they're going to black flag the one car, Brick Mast. Lake Speed being shown as a leader, the Ford Quality Care, but more prepared car number 15. Rusty Wallace in second spot. Wallace trying to make a move. That's Morgan Shepard back in third. Good run for the Wood Brothers car. Morgan in third position, the car number 21. The Sitco sponsored Ford. And Rusty once again, he's trying hard. That was the fourth place car of Jeff Ford. Kenny Wallace in the 28 car, the Howland car. Now running fifth. And Rusty once again looks. Can't get by. Comes again. He's looking again. Uh, can't quite make it. <laughs> I thought you know Rusty's not going to die. Oh! And Lake Speed, they make some contact, and around goes Lake coming off the corner. Heavy contact. Lake Speed slams the inside wall. Both the front and the rear of the car are heavily damaged. You see the what's left of the front of the car of his Ford Thunderbird. And a break again for a couple of drivers. The Bodine brothers this time. Jeff Bodine gets his lap back. Brett Bodine gets his lap back as Morgan Shepard became the leader. And there's so much damage to the 15 car that really will not roll. Watch again as they come off turn four. Rusty gets up alongside. They come off the corner. Looks like a little bit of contact between the two cars. And Lake goes bam in the inside wall. Yeah, they tapped him pretty good coming off the turn when you're almost out of control anyway as you come off of those turns. And just a, a tap there as we see he comes off the turn right directly behind Lake Speed. Gave him a little bit of a tap and around Lake went down to the inside retaining wall. A lot of damage done to the quality care board. Now here's a different view from our speed shot and take a listen. Long, Not at all. There's Lake Speed still sitting inside the car. Fifth caution flag today coming out on lap 91. Heavy damage on the quality care Ford Thunderbird of Lake Speed. Back with more exciting action after this. Stay with us. Somebody was. Of course, Morgan Shepard being shown as our leader. Jeff Gordon in second. Then Rusty and Kenny Wallace in third and fourth. Dale Jarrett back in fifth spot with a broken left wrist. There's 16 through 30 and a Napa field summary. Jeff Burton out in 36 spot. Now Bill Weber has found Lake Speed behind the wall. Bill? Lake Speed, what happened out there? Uh, I just got a little got a little help from the from the rear there. And once you get turned a little sideways on this racetrack, it's pretty narrow right there. So you know the Ford Quality Care car was going good and uh, weren't quite as fast as, as some of them, but we were holding our own there pretty good and continuing to work on the car, trying to get a little bit better. But we'll have to wait until next weekend, I guess, now. 
And that was Lake Speed sitting, still sitting in the fourth Thunderbird and trying to get the car repaired and get him back out. More back to green flag racing lap 96 after five laps of car. And Morgan Shepard took that sit-go four down in turn one as the leader. And Jeff Gordon is second. We see some pretty good damage to the left rear of Jeff Gordon's car. Someone ran the back of his car doing one of these skirmishes. John Andretti trying to fight his way back to the front. A couple of Pontiacs, Michael Walker on the inside. John Andretti on the outside. And Michael about spun out as he came off the corner. This is looking from Terry Labonte's car as Ricky Rudd goes by on the outside or tries to. That's 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th spot. Andretti had taken the 12th spot away. Going by Mike Wallace and Kyle Petty now pulls up there to make the pass on the outside. That's our dog camera. Camera that hangs his head out the right side door. And a couple of cars trying to scratch their way back toward the front. Here's Dale Earnhardt in 19th, and behind him is you're riding along with Mark Martin in 20th position. the Kodiak car. Kenny's having a good year. He's been very consistent. Yes, he has been consistent. He's disappointed he hasn't won, but he's been right there. Boy, don't you know, he don't want to talk about that, man. Oh, no. And you know, at Darlington, South Carolina, the Mountain Dew Southern 500, he was so close. Yeah. Looking back at Kenny Schrader's Chevrolet Logan, Kenny currently fifth in the point standing, just 15 points out of four. And here's Jeff Gordon on the inside of Morgan Shepard taking a look. Has the DuPont car running very well. Did I read that he signed with DuPont Pounds or Rick Hendrick did or somebody did? Yep, I think uh, DuPont committed the spot for the team through 2000. And, uh, Looks like Gordon's got a move on the inside. Oh, man, it was close. Yep, it's so hard to get that traction when you come off the turn and cut the car down the inside. Now he gets to move down on the inside. Let's see if he can do it. Morgan gets the traction up on the outside and still leads. Morgan Shepard drives this track as well as anyone. And John Kernan has an update on Jeff Gordon. Vinny, a couple of weeks ago, Jeff Gordon and the crew brought that car up here and tested for two solid days. Ray Everham said the reason the toughest problem they've had has been here on the short track. It's hard to get Jeff to hold back, and you need patience and take your time here on the short track. So they spent two days here, Jeff learning a line around this racetrack that he felt comfortable with, and he's looking pretty good right now as he takes another look at the lead. Jeff Gordon has a shot inside of Morgan Shepard. And once again, that Tommy Turner engine scrawled down the backstretch. Shepard, Gordon, and Wallace. Here's, there's a battle going on. They're racing everywhere back in the pack. Of course, this is back up front where Gordon Morgan is giving him room to run down there. He might have him this time. I think he does have him. He gets a good grip off the corner, and Jeff Gordon takes the lead. And Rusty Wallace might get him as well. He does. He drives on down in there deep. Now, Morgan's tires, remember, are good, ooh, a good bit older than, uh, than the others. Morgan's been out there a while on his tires. Schrader and Steve Grissom side by side down the front straightaway as we watch from the rear bumper of Ted Musgrave, the Colson car, the Family Channel car, is John Andretti behind those two cars, watching intently. All right, look at all the RPMs they turn here in Martinsville. Well, they crank them up here, Watch just how quick as they accelerate. You see the red? That's the telltale. That's the maximum RPM, about 82, 8,300. That's yeah, so 112 miles per hour down the straightaway. So then we get down to about 60 in the turns. They had low RPM around 4,500, and the high was. Uh, well, over 8,500, so they turn them in a hurry here on RPMs and Marksville. Well, 
front. Jeff Gordon pulling away a little bit now from Rusty Wallace. About a 12 car length separation. There is the DuPont Chevrolet driver. Man who won the inaugural Brickyard 400. Just two days after his 23rd birthday. Jeff Gordon leads here at Martinsville Speedway in the early laps of the Goodies 500. Back with more short track action right after this. Stay with us. Being shown as a leader when we left you a moment ago, Wallace was running second behind Jeff Gordon. But what happened was a couple of cars came together and in turns one and two, the seven car of Jeff Bodine and 22 of Bobby Labonte. And as a result, Gordon slows down. There's a car number 24 right of your screen. He slows down and that cost him. Well, we see Jeff Bodine, the seven car, trying to get going. Jeff Bodine has a flat tire, but Rusty keeps some momentum going and gets on the inside of Jeff Gordon and takes the lead. Jeff Bodine did come in the pits and change that flat tire. Also, Bobby Labonte, the Mansion House car, came in the pits and changed the flat tire on his car as well. Well, there's a lot of scrambling going on here for a lap or two. And we see that Rusty Wallace, you know, Mark, 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 Jeff Gordon pulled away just a little bit a moment ago. From Rusty Wallace, it looks like now the Rusty Wallace is pulled away by a car length or two. And there we see Kenny Wallace in, uh, what is he, fourth? And, right. and Leo Jarrett in fifth. Yeah, right back. The car is running uh, very close there. Morgan Shepard still in third place. But they've been, Kenny Wallace has been trying to get by Morgan. So far, hasn't been able to do it. There's Sterling Marlin trying to get by the 18 car of Dale Jarrett. They'll probably won't fight him with that broken wrist. That's for fifth position, and Sterling Marlin will take the spot. Well, try to take the spot away. Jarrett still has a shot on the outside, and Sterling will take the position in turn three. Let's check in once again with John Kernan. Jarrett Kenny Wallace sitting fourth on the field right now. His best run in that car. You heard Ernie said he talked to him this morning, told him he had to go for it. Larry McReynolds says he thinks that Kenny, when he's gotten in that car, has been thinking that his job has just been to try and finish races, not tear up equipment. Well, Larry told Kenny this morning, said, hey, this is the last race for that particular car. Doesn't matter if you bring it back bent. Holding two on the telephone said, Go after him, buddy. And he's doing it. Indeed, he is. He's trying to fend off the car number four, Sterling Marlin. And behind these four cars is Kyle Petty, the Mellow Yellow Pontiac, who's having a very good run today. Kyle had a great run last week in Dover. There's Bill Elliott, the Budweiser Ford. This is the car Elliott used to sit on the pole at Darlington back in the spring. They weren't expecting the car to run that well when he came here to qualify. We saw Bill at dinner the other night. Man, I, was, I surprised myself in qualifying. Qualifying in 10th spot. And Bill Elliott, I guess you fans realize, has announced a couple of weeks ago that he will be going back to Dawsonville next year to run the uh, car out of the Elliott shops in Dawsonville. We saw while I was talking, Sterling Marlin take over the four spot from Kenny Wallace. This is the leader. Rusty Wallace, the two. Jeff Gordon, the 24. Got about a half a straightaway separation between them and the third place car, Morgan Shepard, who's having a great run in the Sitco Ford. Lynn and Eddie Wood. Their shop's just about, what, 30 miles up the road in Stewart, Virginia. And the four car moves down to the inside and just blew by Morgan. Yeah, I think Morgan, uh, let him go there. Oh. And Bill Weber has a comment on the 18 and the 42, Bill. Well, well Benny Dale Jarrett has not said anything about his wrist to crew chief Jimmy Maycar, who's watching the car go around and calling out the times to DJ. Dale told me this morning when he gets in the car, he really doesn't think about it a lot. It doesn't seem to affect him that much. As far as Kyle Petty is concerned, Barry Dodson said this morning, this is an excellent race car. They've had good cars, just lousy luck. Remember, Kyle went from 42nd to 3rd at Michigan, and this is the same car he had at Richmond. He had a good run going there, a broken oil pump belt early in the race, and that took him out of it. They think they can win in the mellow yellow Pontiac here today. Yeah, Richmond, Virginia. In the race up there, he finished dead last. Some of our spotters are telling us that they smell some fluid. It's very warm in some of the rear ends of the cars around here. They use a, about a 90-weight fluid in the rear of these cars, and when they get awfully hot, they stink to high heaven. Some of our spotters are seeing the smell that 
un that very familiar smell here in Martinsville. Dale Jarrett moves on the inside of Morgan Shepard to take the four spot away, and you got to wonder what's uh, what's going on with the 21 car. Well, he's been out there a long time with those tires, Jerry. He had run about 20 or so laps. He did it on one of those earlier cautions, and everybody else. Seen it. That's beginning to tell the story on the Sitco Ford for Morgan. Earnhardt on the inside of John Andretti trying to pass the STP Pontiac. A little bit of uh, bumping and banging as he goes by or tries to go by. That's for 11th position. Earnhardt trying to claw his way back toward the top 10. John Andretti has been doing a very good job in the STP Pontiac. And this might be his best run so far, Ned. Yeah, he's, he has hung right in there. Apparently, he likes the short tracks. He has a good feel for a race car, and that's very important on a track like this. Recorded his best finish up in Richmond a few weeks ago when he finished 11th in the STP Pontiac, and he hangs right on the rear deck of Earnhardt. Back in 12th spot. And there comes Harry again. He's going back to his last run here at the Martinsville Speedway. I remember Harry Gant for that statement I made in, what, 1991 when he crashed over there in turn three, and I said, unfortunately, Harry Gant will not win his fourth in a row. <laughs> he, he showed you, didn't he? <laughs> he showed me. Hey, in fact, this is the same race car as they have a car in the wall up in turns three and four. Todd Bodine apparently has cut a tire and tagged it big time, and now Doyle Ford will once again wave the yellow flag. Here's a car trying to get a lap back. Joe Nemechek in the 41. It looks like he will not quite do it. He can't catch Rusty Wall. He tried hard, but he broke loose coming off the turn and just simply couldn't do it. Fireman walking over to check on the condition of Todd. Right, and we see the 22 car is stalled on the course up between three and four. I think he had just come out of the pits back there, Benny, and I don't know. If the, yeah, he stalled. Don't know what the problem is. And look, there's got a problem on the left rear of that car because the Goodyear, the yellow letters are not there. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's made contact with someone. Well, all the leaders coming into the pits now. No surprise, they've been out there a while, so they want to come in and get some fresh tires on. Let's go to Bill Webber. Miller Genuine Draft Board in the pits. This is routine for these guys. They'll go for four tires and fuel. Rusty's at Midnight Rider. This car already has two wins this year. They think they can make it a third. Another quick pit stop. Rusty does have a donut on the left side. And that car's down in the rain. Let's go to John. Jeff Gordon in for a four tire change. Rusty is down in the way already. Left side's on Jeff Gordon's car. He'll go out, but Dale Jarrett will beat him out on pit road. Dale Earnhardt is down at the end of pit road. And Earnhardt, the left side tires, they just finished changing them. Dale Earnhardt will now go out. It looks like a dead heat between he and Ken Schrader. Boy, it's a great pit work. Great, as always, great pit work in the Miller Genuine Draft Crew. But uh, the Interstate Batteries crew had a good stop. Yeah, they had a great stop. About 17 and a half seconds. So Jerry got him from fourth up to second. Todd Bodine is looking for somebody to come by. And... Yeah, maybe he didn't pull a tire. He, he might have got uh, helped into the wall. He just wants to tell somebody he's displeased with them. Maybe he's just trying to get across the track, waiting for an opening to get across the track. We, we had, had a report that he cut a tire down. Apparently, that was the case. Okay. A tough break for Todd Bodine. We're under caution once again at Martinsville Speedway. Action everywhere you look. Back with more on the short tracks right after this. Introducing Ford Contour. Global thinking has brought world-class technology to two all-new engines. It's it up in turn three, where Todd Bodine was contacted. Well, here's our pit summary. See Rusty Wallace in first, out first. Jeff Gordon out in second, out third. But Dale Jarrett came in fourth, went out second. A great pit stop by the Interstate Battery Crew. Great pit stop. Of course, a big, big loser in that event was Morgan Shepard. He was fifth and came out 11, but he's pitting on the back stretch, and that made the world a difference. A huge disadvantage. Still under caution here at Martinsville as they have been able to remove the factory stores of America for Thunderbird and bring it back behind the garage. Darius will be back with more short track action. The Goodies 500 right after this. Your states is where to buy your dream. 42 after seven laps under caution. Rusty Wallace now having led 17 of the last 18 short track events. Show of the way. That's Mike Wallace, Alec Myers. In car camera, or the camera actually that's hung out the door as he watches the cars go by. They went Kyle Petty. We saw Kenny Wallace in the Highland car go by. Kenny is in fourth place. Kyle Petty is in fifth place. Our 
leader is Rusty Wallace. Now the caution came out a minute ago when Todd Bodine had heavy contact in turn three, and Bill Weber has caught up with him. Bill? Well, Todd Bodine had a sixth place finish here in the spring, but not today, Todd. What happened? Well, we, we must have run over something down the back straightaway and cut the right front tire down. Uh, it's a shame, you know, this factory stores forward. We're, we're doing pretty good, starting last, working our way up, biding our time. You know, we're running the same speeds as the leaders, and, you know, it's a shame we had to run something over. It's no fault of the tire. Goodyear's got a great tire last while, and just a shame. Todd Bodine, 18th in points coming in here today, surrounded by his two brothers. We see Earnhardt trying to make a move down on the inside of Musgrave. Musgrave, of course, with the pole sitter. Hasn't been much of a factor so far in the race as they get awfully close together, coming off the turn. Going into turn three, Earnhardt will get the position. That's for eighth spot, Dad, as he takes a spot away. Frank's Musgrave back in the ninth position. The camera on top of the Family Channel car, the Napa Field Summary once again. Check it out. Find out where your favorite driver is running. Kyle Petty makes a move inside of the 28 car. We'll take the spot away, so you can change that one quickly on your rerun. So Kyle takes the four spot away from Kenny Wallace. You can see we still have a lot of cars in the lead lap. In fact, 24 of them. The seven car that you're seeing, Jeff Bodine, the inside batter car, he gets caught up on the outside pole. Earnhardt goes by Sterling Marlin, takes the eighth spot away. He's now seventh, or seventh spot, actually. Anyway, Jeff Bodine with the outside poster. He's now, what, a lap or two down? Two laps down. Right. Inside battery car. He had to make a pit stop under green to change tires when he had a problem down in turn one. Let's check in once again with John Curry. John? Just to add to Jeff Bodine, he believes that the toe has been knocked out, and also he believes that the car is a possibly a bent A-frame on the right front, so the car is definitely not handling the way it was earlier in the race. And, John, didn't you report the exhaust was knocked flat when he went, drove across the curb, or did they fix that problem? Yeah. Benny, what they did, the next opportunity is they came in, they took a crowbar underneath, and they opened that up. It's not open quite as much as it was, but it's open a lot more than when it was bent. It was bent down, closed down to about only a half an inch of opening. And normally, it's, I think it's about an inch and three quarters, two inches. But it's just about normal right now. All right, good. Thank you, John. So Jeff Bodine had one excursion across the curbing, which got that left side exhaust. Let's take a look there on the left side. of You really can't see it. It's right in front of the left front tire. Sometimes these guys put the exhaust on the right, off the right side. I don't know which side the, the seventh car would have his exhaust pipe out. But. Looks like he's running pretty good right now. Yes, he is. Staying right between Dale Jarrett, second and the third place car of Jeff Gordon. Take up Mark Martin back in the pack here. Mark Martin, Brent Bodine, and Ricky Rudd. There's Mark, car number six. He's being shown in 20th spot. They've been adjusting on that, on that car almost every caution flag. He's been going in the pit, Steve Mill and the crew adjusting, trying to get that car handled a little bit better, as the 10 car as well. Ricky Rudd's car not handling well at all. He's been making several pit stops every time the caution flag comes out and jumping on that car. John Kern, what have they been doing to Mark Martin's car, the Babylon Ford? Benny, they've been, as you have speculated, as you have said, yes, they've been adjusting on the car. It's been tight since the first start of the race. But more importantly, he's had some contact out there on the racetrack. Both the right front and left front fenders were thin in on the car, and they've had to keep pulling those away to get them away from the tire. And right now, Mark looks like he's running pretty well. Let's watch the camera inside the car and see what kind of problems Mark Martin's having through the corners. Too bad, not finding it too bad through the corners. And then we're talking about Dale Jarrett having his, having his left wrist broken. We see how Mark is really pulling that wheel down with his with his left arm. And that really truly is the most critical arm that you use in the race car is the left. Yeah, I always drove more with my left arm than, than I did with the right. It's easier to pull than it is to push. And if you're steering with your right hand, you're having to push. 
<laughs> Joe Nemechek had a problem just a moment ago. Almost came to a stop on the backstretch. Now the car seems to be back under power, but the car nearly stopped in the middle of the backstretch. I don't wonder maybe if it jumped out of gear or maybe he switched to a different ignition box. The car slowed and came back up to speed. If he jumped out of gear, it probably not run long because he's probably turning about 10,000 RPM when he jumped up in neutral. Yeah, you're already up there over 8,000, and if it goes out of gear, it really does run those RPMs up. And Ricky Rudd goes back and back forward. Look at old Rusty Wallace. He's not driving away from Dale too bad, Ned. Well, Dale has pulled away a little bit from Jeff Bodine and is gaining on Rusty Wallace right now. I wonder if uh, his car was maybe a little bit tight there at the beginning, right after the green flag came out, and then he just began to pick up a little bit. Never see Earnhardt back in seventh spot. 3.2 seconds behind our leader, Rusty Wallace. I think Rusty might be running just as fast as he has to run out there to, to maintain the lead. He's very comfortable out there. Nobody bothering him. No cars in front of him right now. There's the lap. He's a third of a lap away from any cars in front of him. So he can just sit there and ride nice and easy where Earnhardt's having to find a lot of traffic. That's Earnhardt. Brad Teague that Earnhardt's going by right now. Brad Teague in the Jimmy Means automobile. Those cars, st cars still looking for a sponsor. Back in 29th place, about a half a dozen laps down. There we see Kyle Petty and Kenny Walsh. Kenny looks on the inside of Kyle. He's got the spot. Takes over fourth. And there's Bill Elliott right behind him to see if he can possibly go by. He can't quite make the move. He falls back in behind Kyle, but Kenny Wallace will take the fourth position away. Yes, we talked to Ernie Irvin earlier today, and we probably will talk to Ernie again before the day's over. He's at home in Concord, North Carolina. I'm doing real well, sounding real good. And we are being told now that the 41 car, Joe Neiman checked a moment ago when he slowed, did switch to a backup ignition, had a ignition problem, so that's the reason the car slowed abruptly and down back up to speed. The Mineke Muffler Chevrolet. to our leader that is Rusty Wallace in the car number two the Miller genuine draft Ford Thunderbird showing the way Dale Jarrett is second Jeff Gordon third Kenny Wallace fourth and Kyle Petty is fifth after 165 of 500 laps in the Goodies 500 Rusty Wallace showing the way here at Martinsville Speedway back in just a moment call now to vote and by smooth bush and easy drinking bush light Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. Take a look at Spotters Row now. These are the most, probably the most important men in the pit crew. There, to the left of your, that's Vic Irvin to the left of your screen there, helping spot for the 28 car. You saw Don Miller, one of the co-owners, who's spotting for Rusty Wallace. Vic Irvin had the light blue shirt on. It's Ernie's dad, of course. And look here, Dale Jarrett has caught Rusty Wallace. Seems like the longer Dale's car runs, the better it gets. Uh, Rusty, I don't know if his car is getting a little looser again. He might be just sitting there running as fast as he has to to stay out front. We'll see in a minute because I'm sure Jarrett would like to lead this race. And Jeff Gordon is is getting on those two cars. Bill Weber, what's going on? Well, down here in the 42 pit, Todd Bodine is getting ready to climb into the mellow yellow Pontiac. He's going to replace Kyle Petty. Kyle has not felt well all week. He was very ill, he said, on Friday and not much better on Saturday. He's radioed to his crew. He is not feeling well. They're going to try and put Todd Bodine in this car. Huh. That may explain that? why Kyle Petty uh, lost about three or four spots a minute ago. You know, and Rusty Wallace went to test at Phoenix this week, and he had a cold out there, was sick all the time. He got back home on Thursday, slept about 18 hours, came up here Friday, and... Uh, so maybe that's some of Russell's problem. Maybe he's feeling the effects of the flu he had this week. Kyle giving Morgan Shepard room there, and they touch a little bit coming off the turn. Kyle keeps the position. That is for ninth and tenth spot. Kyle in ninth. Morgan, Morgan back in tenth position in the set go forward. They're trying to get 
Todd a possible way to get him the car. What are they doing down there, Bill Weber? Well, what they're trying to do, Jerry, is I'm sure you know they're going to try and build a seat, basically, for Todd Bodine. Of course, Kyle Petty, tall and slender. Todd's a little shorter and a little more stocky build. So they're going to try and cut these pieces of foam so when Todd gets in the car, he'll be more comfortable in the seat be able to reach the wheel and the pedals. They're going to try and do all this under a caution, but Kyle is not certain he will last that long. One driver definitely hoping for a caution flag and hoping he's not in. It's Kyle Petty, the mellow yellow on the end. Yeah, he's, uh, he's less than a half a lap behind the leader. So he's, he still is not in danger of going a lap down. And we see he's been able to pull away from Morgan Shepard. And I would guess that when they told him they had a relief driver, Todd Godin, that they were not going to try to fix the Factory Stores of America car that Kyle Petty probably picked up speed because he realized he was not going to have to run 500 laps, but instead 250 laps. We talked about our point battle, how close it has been the past few events between Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. Let's take a look at the last 10 events. Wallace, of course, with two victories, the average finish better for Wallace, and the point still very, very close. Just about a four-point gain by Wallace, and that won't get it done for Rusty with just five more events remaining. No, he's... 200 and what 27 points behind now he's going to have to depend on luck bad luck on Earnhardt's part here's Rusty putting a lap on Michael Walker in the pencil Pontiac take a look at the point standings as we mentioned Earnhardt 227 in front of Wallace and Martin is back Ricky Rudd in fourth position and Ken Schrader is just 15 points back in fifth spot and here's Kenny Schrader as he Moves in on the Sitco Ford of Morgan Shepard and Kyle Petty. That's for position. Once again, Morgan trying to get by Kyle. He's far enough by this time. I believe he'll make it. Yeah. Ooh. They get awfully close coming off the turn. But he should get him going into turn three. There are five cars right in this group here that are battling for position. You see Harry Gant and John Andretti in the picture. 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Another battle here between Sterling Marley, Marlin and Bill Elliott. And Marlin trying to take that spot away from Bill Elliott. That's fifth position. And around he goes. See what Sterling Marlin, that Kodak film car, looks like he is strong today because he and Earnhardt running together. He's pulled away from Earnhardt by half of the back straightaway. So Sterling Marlin's car running very, very well. There are 22 cars in the lead lap. Michael Walker was just lapped a little bit ago. He is in the 23rd position. But Strickland is running 22nd. He's about a half a straightaway in front of Rusty Wallace. Here we see Earnhardt. There's Kyle Petty in the 42. John Andretti. Richard Petty owned the car, driven by John Andretti. And Harry Gant just went by Kenny Schrader to take that spot away. Don't count the old man out here today. No, he's still capable of winning, and he really wants to do it before he hangs it up this year. We've got a Harry Gant day, week from tomorrow, at, in Taylorsville, North Carolina. The Chamber of Commerce is having a Harry Gant day. they got a parade late in the afternoon, about 5 o'clock. A lot of drivers will be there to sign autographs. You and I both are scheduled to be there, Benny. Really look forward to celebrating that day with Harry Gant. Oh, yes. Ned and I both are going to be there. We won't get shut of her again. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, folks. I'm only kidding. I tell you, Harry won his first ever Winston Cup race right here back in 84, in April of 84. Wouldn't it be appropriate he would win one of his last races at this racetrack? Let's check in the pits with John Kernan. John? Well, Darrell Waltrip has been having some great runs as of late. It's got the confidence up on the team. And they were hoping to win the race today, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. About six laps ago, Daryl radioed in and said, guys, I'm out of brakes and I'm dropping back quickly. Ah, brakes is so hard here at this racetrack, so difficult to keep good brakes on the car. The accelerate, we showed on the telemetry not too long ago, 120 miles an hour down the straightaway and slow down to 60 miles an hour. You lose 60 miles an hour in about 50 yards, it seems like, and it takes a lot of brake pedal to do that. That's why brakes are so critical. Right now, he is about a third of a lap in front of the leader, Rusty Wallace, so he is not in danger at this point of going a lap down, but if he has to slow down much, it won't take long. 
Yeah, he's in 17th spot right in front of Derek Cope at 18. And Will Hold is showing you Rusty Wallace coming by there is the leader, Rusty Wallace. Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon back in second and third. And another car, I think, who's out of brakes is Jimmy Spencer in the McDonald's car. Because he's certainly running around the racetrack like he's losing brakes. As we see Harry Gant going by Morgan Shepard. Going down to turn one just a moment ago, taking that spot away. Take a look at our race record, 79.185 miles per hour. The average speed thus far due to caution flags, some six of them thus far, 72.187. So not a record pace thus far. Just past the 190 lap mark. A little over 300 laps remain here in the Goodies 500. Rusty Wallace leads back in a moment. Garth Brooks Collection, Garth's Favorites, is available now at McDonald's. Each full-length CD is unbelievably priced at just $5.99. Each cassette, three... Play. Rusty Wallace being shown as our leader. There's Dale Jarrett in second place. You know, coming into this race, Ernie Irvin had still led more laps during this season than anyone else. He had led 1,773 laps, and just a moment ago, by virtue of leading today, Rusty Wallace just passed Irvin and has now led over 1,780 laps. Well, and Ernie has been out for five races. Or this is the sixth race, I guess, that he's, he's not been able to run. Too bad, Ernie. Well, I'll tell you, he had, he had some kind of a year going. There's no doubt about that. i tell you what. As we watch the leader, Rusty Wallace, the 18 car, there's the 24 car. That 28 car is not doing too bad today. As a matter of fact, he's picking up on Jeff Gordon. There he right is right now. there. Kenny Wallace driving the Hamlin car is running very probably the best run by far the best run he's had. Rusty coming up on Brett Bodai to put a lap on him. Brett is currently being shown in the 21st position. Still a lot of cars on the lead lap. Running along with Rusty Wallace in car cameras. He now moves behind Brett, as you heard Dad mention, trying to put Brett down, and he will indeed put Brett down. Lord Iden, one lap down. A lot of speculation as to what Brett's going to do next year, Benny. Well, there is a lot of speculation. Uh, a lot of people says he has a deal with Junior Johnson, but nothing has been announced. Uh, he did announce that he's leaving the 26 car, and they have announced that, folks, the 26 car, the Quaker State car, will be driven by Steve Kinzer, the World of Outlaws open wheel driver in 1995 on the Winston Cup circuit. And I think he read a, a, that he signed a, what, a three-year contract with Bernstein, so. I think Bernstein was so impressed, as were a lot of people, at what Kinzer was able to do in the International Race of Champions event at Talladega. When he won that race on the Super Speedway in Talladega, uh, always been impressive as a race driver, but on a Super Speedway, to be able to beat some of the best in the world, I mean, that was that was pretty good. It was pretty doggone good. Like I said, Brett Bodine, most people down in the garage area have him teaming up with Junior Johnson next year, but uh, that has not been announced yet. I bet we'll see it happen, but uh, like I say, it hasn't been announced. You know, when we talk about the Drivers' Championship, the, the auto, Automobile Manufacturers' Championship is uh, getting close to an end, as a matter of fact. See, coming into this race, Ford had won 17 races, Chevrolet 8, Pontiac none. The poles, similar. Ford had won 22, Chevrolet 4. You can see the points there, 201, 172. And if the, a Ford finishes first or second today, they'll clinch the championship for this year for the second time in the last three years. You see uh, Rusty go by Ricky Rudd and put the tied Ford down a lap. And Ricky's running in 20th Oh, position. and Nemechek spins right down in turn one and two. No caution flag yet. Right in front of Kenny Wallace, he spun, but he might be lodged up on that curve. I believe, well, no, he's moving now. I thought he was hung up there for a minute, but he is moving. No caution. He gets it off the curve and heads down back pit road in the mine that came up for Chevrolet. There is Joe Nemechek. There we see Kyle Petty has fallen back to Mark Martin and Terry LeBond is still on four place start. He just joined us. We documented that Kyle Petty was ill, was feeling sick in the car, so they're trying to get a caution to get him in. Here's a race now developing for third position between Jeff Gordon and Kenny Wallace. And Gordon just has a third position. And just a moment ago, Kenny Wallace had a scare when Nemechek going down in turn one. There we see the 41, the black and yellow car on the inside. Jeff Gordon goes by. And as he goes by, around goes Nemechek. 
And Kenny said, oh, please, Joe, don't come up the racetrack. He did, and all the cars went by. Boy, this is a lot of cars racing for a position back here. Now, they're only about a straightaway in front of Rusty Wallace, who is leading this lap. In fact, maybe not as much as a straightaway. And so they're fighting hard not only to pass each other, but to stay out in front of him in the lead lap. But we've got about 15th, 16th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th running in this group of cars. Jerry Coates in there. He's 19th. Steve Grissom took a look on the inside of Mark Martin. Could make the spot. There, Marsh goes on the outside of Brad T. Oh, I saw some rain there. So I want some water from someplace. On the camera on top of the six car. And Rudd slows like he's got a flat tire. Something wrong. Yes, the right front tire is flat on Ricky Rudd's car. So Billy Engle and the Tide crew begin to scamper in the pits and get ready for Rudd to come in in the Tide Ford. Watch as Ricky Rudd goes down in turn one. Brakes to go in the corner, and the right front tire is going flat. Right it. Watch Ricky Rudd as he comes, starts off the corner, and right in front of Jeff Gordon. And watch as Kenny Wallace goes by and takes that third spot. Boy, just in two or three laps there, that Gordon got, got caught up with the car that he was lapping and almost got put into the wall. There's Mark Martin going by Kyle Petty. Now Steve Grissom trying to follow. What Grissom's car is running very well today. That Diamond Ridge car looks like handling well. That is 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th right there. As Martin Grissom, Kyle Petty now being passed by Derek Cope in the car number 12. Ricky Rudd has his service completed. He has some new tires on his tied forward. He goes back out. And we saw that camera shot just a moment ago. There we see Rusty Wallace right at the top of the screen. Right behind this group of cars. Darrell Waltrip, the next car, right in front of Rusty. Yep, Darrell is running in the 19th position. And you can see Rusty is moving in on him. Again, is getting the job done at the age of 54. His final trip to Martinsville Speedway, and there's a Skull Bandit Chevrolet for Harry Gant. Started 24th. He's now running eighth spot. Good run for Harry Gant. You know, I mentioned that Harry Gant day uh, a week from tomorrow, and then the next day after that, there's a special ball game, softball game in Mooresville, North Carolina. To benefit Mark Hayes, who's on the uh, it's in Concord, North Carolina. Concord, good. Right Thanks. by my house at Frank List Park. Right by my house in Concord. I'll be there. Good. I'll be there too. And that's uh, to benefit Mark Hayes, who's a member of the Michael Waltrip team, and he has cancer. So we hope the fans will come out and have a good time that afternoon. I get a chance to talk to Mark Hayes a week or so ago on the telephone. He certainly appreciates all the well wishes from the crew members. Rusty Wallace. Trying to put a lap. He has put a lap on Daryl Waltrip, but Daryl's got him hung behind Michael now. He'll run him down in there behind Michael and use Michael as a picker. Try to. If Michael moves over down the straightaway and lets Rusty have the inside, oh, he's going to make it three abreast. Oh, yeah. Moving in on the slow car of Dick Trickle right in front of Michael Waltrip. And here's Dale Jarrett, the 18 car. He's called Rusty. Rusty sees Jared coming and pulls out to the outside of Michael Walter. Heavy traffic here for the leaders. That puts Michael Walker two laps down, I believe. As we watch all this, let me tell you that Harry Gant just passed Dale Bernhardt. And took over the seventh spot. And Rusty Wallace puts Darrell Walter a lap down. Kyle Petty is right in front of him. I would expect if Rusty goes by Kyle that he'll come into pits and get the relief driver, let Todd Bodine drive the car. Maybe not. Maybe they'll wait for a car to play. Well, they got a pit stop coming up here before too long, I would guess, and Ricky Rudd just made a pit stop there a little bit ago, but he had a flat tire. Bill Weber, you got that tire? This is it right here, Ned. This is the right front tire off of the Tide 4 that Ricky Rudd drives. Apparently, the brakes are getting so hot that the
that it's heating up the tire. You can see right in here how it's separated. The tire's actually separated from the beat of the tire. I'll tell you something else. That's not good for a lot of drivers, because one guy that gets around here pretty good and usually isn't hard on brakes is Ricky Rudd. Well, Rudd fortunately able to keep the car out of the wall, made an unscheduled pit stop, and his car now being shown three laps down in 25th position. Rusty Wallace continues to lead here in the Goodies 500 at Martinsville, Virginia. Back in a moment. Hey, you know my cruise Wallace picking him off one at a time. The next car that he will try to put a lap down. Right in front of him is Derek Cope in the car number 12. Take a look at the field summary where your favorite driver is running. Of course, Rusty and Dale Jarrett, Kenny Wallace, Jeff Gordon, and Sterling Marlins in the top five. And the 15 you see there on the screen, Jerry, are the 15 cars that are on the lead lap now as Rusty Wallace continues to mow them down. On 16th on back, John Andretti just went a lap down. And you can see others that are one or more laps down. Back in 30th spot, Rick Mass, 29 laps down. I really thought Rick would have a good good run here today. He came here with high hopes, the feeling that he, he always drove this track so well, but it just never did get that Skull Bandy car going good. There's our leader, Rusty Wallace. Right in front of him is Mark Mark, the battling for it, and Mark about to go about down. Mark would be in 14th position, and as he, Rusty, gets ready to go around him, we mentioned that Dale Jarrett has been driving a whale of a race with a broken left wrist. And just joining us, you see Dale Jarrett's Interstate Battery Chevrolet. There is the car owner, Coach Joe Gibbs. And, Coach, you, you've, seen a, you've seen teams go through a little bit of adversity just sort of turn things around. It seems like that's what's happening with your operation. Well, we sure have had a lot happen to us. It seemed like it started off at Daytona. Last year, we were great at Daytona and kept going all year. We're up front all year. This year, it's been a real struggle for us. I really appreciate the guys at Interstate, Shell, and GM sticking with us. And uh, it's good to see us back up there right now. Well, you've already won one championship this year. Your truck driver, Rodney Pittler, won the uh, Mayflower Truck Driver Challenge. That's Hey, we're, we're thrilled with Rodney. We got the best truck driver in the world. I think one of the best drivers. And uh, Dale's certainly driving a heck of a race today with a cracked wrist. And uh, I told him after qualifying, I said, hey, man, we ought to beat him up some more. <laughs> There's Rodney Pickler, the truck driver for Joe Gibbs Interstate Battery Car. Mark Martin comes down pit road. This would probably be a scheduled pit stop now that he's going to lap down. Joe, you've been on radio. Has Dale said anything about his wrist or how it's doing? Jimmy asked him, and he said, I'll be OK. <laughs> Of course, as long as he's running good. Kelly yeah. told me he had a high paint threshold, I believe. <laughs> okay. Now, you've had linebackers play before at the, at the Redskins with a broken radicular bone, but this guy's got to be able to handle a race car for 500 laps. Yeah, I'm not sure what that would be like. But I, I've seen some guys play with paint and everything, but I think Dale does. I think Dale's very competitive. He's been just sick, and we have uh, had a lot of things happen to us this year, and it's a thrill for us all to be back up front again. I want to thank Norm and all the guys down at Interstate for staying with us. Mark Mark made a four tire change. A little trouble on that left rear tire, slowed the stop down just a little bit. John Kernel, what kind of problem they have? Benny, I couldn't see what the problem was, but the, uh, it, down here in the pits, but the problem out on the racetrack, Mark's car has just gotten very, very loose. Of course, we've had some bright sunshine here that heated some things up. So when he came in, they put a round wedge in the car, and they also bumped up the spoiler to get a little more downforce on the rear end. Now we see Mark back on the racetrack right in front of his team car, the family channel car of Ted Musgrave. Coach, are not playing football today? Uh, they're playing football, but I, I got off the racing, man. Oh, good for you. <laughs> uh, I get a kick out of the race, and of course, I, I flew all the way to the West Coast to see my son play Coy out there at Stanford. Did they get beat up on yesterday? Yeah, they got, they got beat up pretty good. Arizona did a good job. Now, wait a minute. You went to Northwestern a week ago, Washington, but they're probably going to want to keep you home. I, I, don't mention that. I think that's been brought up. <laughs> next, next week, they got Notre Dame, but that's not tough enough. <laughs> okay, Coach. Uh, that's Joe Gibbs. Uh, head Coach Joe Gibbs is, of course, the car owner for Dale Jarrett. Coach, thanks for joining. Thank you. Ken Schrader here trying to make a pass on Ted Musgrave. That's for eight spot, huh? Ninth spot. Ninth spot. We're racing for. And we are told the pit stops, scheduled pit stops coming up in about 10 laps. So we'll be able to cover those momentarily here at Martinsville Speedway. Rusty Wallace, our leader. Dale Jarrett in second. Kenny Wallace having a great run. Mexico Havilland fourth Thunderbird subbing for Ernie Irvin. Jeff Gordon is in fourth spot and Sterling Marlin in fifth. After 242 of 500 laps, 
getting set for a green flag pit stop when we come back to Martinsville Speedway. Stay with us. Spends hundreds of hours to lead has led 134 of 248 laps. And we're watching the Napa Field summary. Ted Musgrave, our pole sitter, back in 10th spot. And now 13 cars on the lead lap. And Bobby Hamilton, that 13th car in jeopardy, is going to lap down. That's him and the Kendall Oil Pontiac right in front of Rusty Wallace. Way being signaled by Doyle Ford, 250 laps down, 250 to go. In the goodies, 500. And there's some scrambling around down in the pits in the mellow yellow crew, like Kyle Petty might be going to be coming in pretty soon. We'll have to keep an eye on that. They have Todd Bodine standing by because Kyle has been ill, has been sick. They've been hoping to get a caution flag, and they've had Todd standing there for quite a while. Kyle thought he could hang on, but that was about 70 laps ago. There's Kyle Petty as uh, Kenny Schrader goes by. There's Musgrave, the family channel car. He's going by Kyle Petty. Let's see if Kyle makes that left and comes in the pits. Nope, going to make another lap. They're still trying to get that seat adjusted for Todd Bodine and the helmet with the radio hooked up. Of course, quite a bit of difference uh, between the sizes of Kyle Petty and Todd. Kyle being much taller. They want to make sure Todd can fit in the seat comfortably and also for a safety factor to make sure he fits snugly. And Kyle's car just getting slower and slower. It looks like he maybe will. Yes, he will come down pit road as Todd Bodine he is standing by to make the driver change. Kyle trying to hang on as long as he possibly could, said, I think I can make it, but that was about 75 laps ago, and he had been sick and been ill, and one of those hot race cars on a humid day like this in Martinsville, you see Kyle is totally exhausted. Let's go down to Bill Webber. What they did, they took Todd Bodine down to the backup car in the rig of the Mellow Yellow team to make sure he would fit. They got some foam rubber or some foam sponge for his support. Todd says his only problems would be his short legs might not be able to reach the pedal. So they took him down there and they fitted him in the car. He said, okay, I'm ready to go. Kyle radioed in, I'll hang on as long as I can until I can't turn the wheel anymore. Obviously, he's reached that point now. Todd Bodine is strong on this track, but uh, he's going to have a tough battle back. This car is good, but obviously they're going to lose several laps here making this change. And we see the crewman there spraying water in the grill, making sure that the car stays cool while Todd Bodine gets hooked up. And if you're wondering what happened to Todd Bodine's ride, he cut a tire early in the event, smacked the wall down in turn three, and they had to call it a day, and that Butch Mott Motorsports factory stores for it. That's why he was available to substitute drive. And while all this has been going on, Rick Mask pulled the Skull Classic Ford behind the wall. Apparently, he's out of the race. And Jeff Bodine in the seven car, the Exide battery car, passed the leader, Rusty Wallace, just a moment ago. Jeff Bodine had been in and changed tires. Back on the racetrack, he's a couple laps down, but he went by Rusty. Talking should come out, he'd get one of those laps back. And uh, Dick Trickle also passed the leader. He had on new tires. Dale Jarrett now is moving in on the Rusty Wallace. It depends a great deal on the traffic they catch and where they catch them as to how Jared is able to move in. And Kenny Wallace might be moving in on both of them. He's not too far back behind them there. Let's take a look at our Bush Beer race. Right. Good. Take a look at our Bush Beer race recap. Leader, uh, car number two, Rusty Wallace. Led 140 of 254 laps. There have been eight leaders, 11 lead changes. Six cautions for 35 laps. The average speed, 75.651 miles per hour. Our leaders, Rusty Wallace. He's led the bulk of the event. Bodine, Strickland, Morgan Shepard led 17 laps. Lake Speed was leading until a problem early on. Jeff Gordon has led six laps, and Jimmy Spencer led a lap. All in Michael Walton. Out of race, Jeff Burton, Ward Burton, Lake Speed, and Todd Bodine. Rusty's car is beginning to pull. Did I just a little bit turn? There was some smoke out of that. I left saw side. some smoke. I did too, Jenny. I hey, saw that, that same like, thing. Looks like a, a brake's going away or something on Rusty Wallace's car. His, his car is going up a little bit in the turns. It's like he doesn't have the proper brakes. He's letting the car drift up the hill so he doesn't have to use brakes. We'll 
watch again as he comes down the straightaway and see if we see a puff of smoke this time. No, I didn't. John Andretti's in the pits in the STP Pontiac. And so is Terry Labonte in the Kellogg Chevrolet. Two cars on pit road. Andretti in the five car, Terry Labonte. Now Terry gets his service. There's the STP Pontiac still getting his service. Terry Labonte was being shown in 17. Oh! And the 12 out. car spins right down at turn one, and he stopped. I don't know if he's going to Caution is out. Tough break for those cars that just had made pit stops. That would mean John Andretti and Terry Labonte. Now Derek Cope gets it righted right in front of Mark Martin. And a break for the car number 40, Bobby Hamilton, who was just about to be lapped by Rusty Wallace. And it may be a break for Rusty Wallace. It could be a big, huge break for Rusty Wallace. Because if he does have some type of problem, they'll be able to try to rectify it on this pit stop. Riding along with Rusty, the seventh caution flag today. Now we've just seen a puff of smoke out of the car. And he was letting the car drift up in the turns, and as the pace car pulls in front of him, we're going to find out if he has brakes or not. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. You can rest assured they're headed to pit road. Out in the pits. Let's go to Bill Weber in the Dale Jarrett pit. Interstate Battery Chevrolet on pit road. Four tires. Rodney Pickler with the fuel. Obviously, Dale's running extremely well. As Coach Gibbs said, he hasn't said much about his grip. Let's go to John Kernan. Left side tires going on Rusty Wallace. They've got a smoke and a pit stop going. Buddy Barrett said not a problem with the car. Rusty down the way of four tire change. And Kenny Wallace beats Dale Jarrett out on. Pit Road, 16.6 seconds for Rusty Wallace. Wow. Bernard still sitting in the pits as Bill Elliott comes out. And I don't know. Let's Here's... watch. Sorry, Benny, go ahead. Let's watch it. We'll show you the smoke that Ned and I would see. That's the brake smoke. When he hits the brakes, it's like he's got some, or maybe a piece of rubber flip on the racetrack, went in the brakes, and it, and it caught on fire. It sure looked like a brake. Uh, fluid getting on the on the caliper. John Kerner, what are they saying down there? I just talked to Buddy Parrott. He said what that problem is, it's just rubber that comes in. We talk about the buildup, the rubber that's on the track that gets stuck on the tires, rubber coming in to the brake ducts, getting up on the rotor, and actually causing that smoke. That's their explanation from down here. Well, that, that would be possibly be an explanation. We talked about buildup on the tires, and they are riding along with Kenny Wallace. And one young fan just said, I think I'll take a little nap during the caution flag and come back wide open when we go back green flag racing. So we'll let you take a break yourself at home as we come back in just a moment with more green flag action from the Goodies 500. Stay with us. It does. We're showing it right here at Martinsville. We saw 8,900 RPMs on the tachometer. The engine turned that much. That machine drilled all those holes at exactly the same place so that those push rods, those rocker arms are in line. They go up and down true. They're not off one thousandth of a second. That certainly reflects the performance of that car number 28, the Robin Yates Racing Ford. And all the rest of the Fords, because all the Fords, or most of the Fords, get their cylinder heads from Robert Yates. Exactly. Lap 273. Back to Green Flag Racing. We'll bring in today on Kyle Petty, who was taken out of the car a moment ago. We are told from the infield care center they are just cooling down, giving him a little bit of oxygen, cooling his body temperature down, and he is doing fine. That's good news. As an update on Kyle Petty. They lost five laps while they were making that change during the Green Flag. Yeah. Kenny Wallace has moved the Howland car into second place. Came out of the pits in second, had a great pit stop. Kenny's career best was ninth at Talladega back in August of this year, driving in the car number 44. This is fifth race in the car number 28, seventh for Ernie Irvin. We talked about the smoke out of Rusty Wallace's car. If it was any type of problem, they did not work on it. So maybe it was, as John Kernan said, a piece of rubber that blew up off the racetrack, got in the, the brake system and caught on fire. That maybe was the smoke that we saw. That's what the team says anyway. There 
Percy Schrader and Harry Gant. Side by side, this is down the front straightaway going in turn one. As for the ninth and tenth position, Schrader in ninth spot and Gant moving to the inside, trying to take that spot away. Right behind Darrell Waltrip, who is being shown in 13th, but a lap down. Yeah, there are 12 cars on the lead lap now. And Morgan Shepard in the Sitco car led the race and ran so well. He had some kind of problem and ran slow around the racetrack for a few laps. Did, was lapped by Rusty Wallace. He now is a lap down. But he's running good right now, looks like. Here's a battle, Bill Elliott in the car number 11, the Budweiser Ford that won the last time we aired a Winston Cup race at Darlington back a few weeks ago, he and Earnhardt. He beat Earnhardt out of the pits, did Bill Elliott by just about a, uh, a uh, foot or two, and Earnhardt's trying to take that spot away, and meanwhile, they're right behind Sterling Marlin. And that's uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh, Sterling Marlin running fifth, Elliott running sixth, and Earnhardt seventh. If you just joined us early in our broadcast, we spoke with Ernie Irvin from his home in Concord, North Carolina. And what a wonderful opportunity it was to be able to speak to Ernie. And now we have Ernie back on the telephone. And Ernie, uh, your buddy Kenny Wallace is doing a pretty good job subbing for you right now here at Martinsville, Virginia. I tell you, he's doing one heck of a job. And, um, you know, all the guys need this. And, um, I haven't been able to be there. And, you know, it's, it's been a struggle. So they, they need a good run. They do need a good run. This is what exactly what the doctor ordered for Larry and all those guys. Yeah, it sure is. You know, um, you know, you, you get into a, a rut, um, you know, not running that well, and Kenny was trying to make sure you know, he kept finishing every race. You know, you just you just get to a procedure like like Larry said. You know, he said just go out and run that car. All it'll be worth. And Kenny's doing it. Is that what you told him this morning? Run as hard as you can? Yeah, I told him to run hard all day. <laughs> That's what he's doing, Ernie. Ernie, about this time in the race when some of the drivers begin to be concerned here at Martinsville about brakes, what's the first thing you begin to feel on the pedal here at Martinsville? Well, you know, with the technical happening forward, you know, they, they had such good brakes and stuff. I've never had a problem with them, but, you know, some of the other cars I drove, you know, basically you start feeling the pedal, you having to pump it once or twice. Um, to go into each corner, and you know, that, that's going to, to start going into each driver, and, you know, sooner or later, it's going to be pumping it three times, four times, and that's just going to get worse and worse. There yeah, we see Kenny standing in front of Dale Jarrett. There yeah, we see him up in front of Dale and Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he's able to maintain a couple of three-car lead in front of those two cars. Rusty Wallace is leading the race. He's on out in front of them a little bit. Arnie, did these guys call you and tell you what kind of chassis setup they had in the car? We, we've talked about it a couple times, and it's exactly the same as we ran there last time, and uh, the same as we won the race there the last time. So, you know, me and Larry talked quite a, quite a bit this week. That, that just seems to be the chassis setup that that car wants to run. It's, you know, you won your first race in that 28 car here one year ago, and it just seems like that you've been in that car a lot longer than that, Ernie. No, it, it sure does, Benny. Um, but it's only been a year, and it's you know, hard to believe I'm hurt now, and you can't run it, but uh, hopefully we'll be back. Next year you can come back and uh, defend your crown, right? Yeah, I hope so. Ernie, that was a special race a year ago here at Martinville, a special time for a lot of people. I know that to you it was very special because when you came down pit road after taking the checkered flag, one man stepped across the wall and gave you the thumbs up, and that was Bobby Allison. Yeah, it sure was. You know, um, as I was told before the race, um, and Allison had never won a race here at, at Martinville, and um, it really meant something for me to win there, and then Bobby to, to come out and give me the thumbs up. Bobby did that thumbs up deal, and um, so it really meant a lot. A very, very special day for Ernie Irvin and a very emotional victory lane. And uh, I guarantee there'll be plenty more victory lanes in Ernie Irvin's future as he gets gets better and comes back to us in racing. Ernie, thanks for taking time to join us. We're going to take a quick break here as we're under green flag racing. 288 of 500 laps are complete as Rusty Wallace continues to lead Kenny Wallace here at Martinsville. Back in a moment. In his McDonald's Ford Thunderbird. Let's show you what happened just a moment ago to Spencer. There he is, the red car, the 27, right in front of Steve Grissom, and a little bit of bump from Spencer. Uh, around goes Spencer. Wow. 
Take a look at Rusty Wallace's season thus far. Seven wins thus far. His last win coming a week ago in the Split Fire Spark Plug 500. Two poles, three DNS. That's what killed him, those three DNS. Sure is. You just can't do that. You got to run every lap of every race almost to win a championship anymore. 227 points back. He's won two of the last four events, but uh, and although Dar Dale Earnhardt hasn't won a race in the last 16 starts, he still manages to hang on to that point lead. Very consistent. We saw the cars weaving back and forth. Both the Wallace brothers were weaving the cars back and forth. That's trying to get rid of the buildup that John Kernan showed you earlier on in the broadcast. And these cars did not pit. These tires are hot. They Kept, they've gathered a lot of buildup on the cars, so it's going to be really critical to get down in turn one softly this time and not go in there too hard because you might slide up the hill. Still working the eighth caution flag of the day here in the Goodies 500 at Martinsville Speedway. Who else? Rusty Wallace continues to lead. My buddy told me to buy him, that he put him in his vehicle, and he ain't. Speedway lap 297, and the brothers Wallace run one, two. Rusty and Kenny. See Dale Jarris pulled up right on the back bumper of Kenny. Rusty Wallace has already blasted out to about a three-car length advantage just in a lap. Well, that car is strong because we see it strong in many races, in most races, as a matter of fact. like that Kenny Wallace after the race gets going after about 75 laps it looks like his car is about as fast as anyone else's but the first few laps looks like Rusty has an advantage. Heard Ernie Irvin talk about how good this race car has been with this race team and what a great setup they have here. The last three times this car has been here it has finished second first and second. Davey Allison drove it to a second place finish in the spring of 93. Ernie Irvin won in this car in this race a year ago. Ernie Irvin drove this same race car to a second place finish back in the spring of this year. Pretty good record. Not bad. We'll see Bobby Hamilton in the 40 car still on the lead lap. And he's the last car on the lead lap. One time he had almost gone a lap down and the caution came out at the right time for him. And he was able to get in, get some fresh tires and stay on the lead lap. He's battling Steve Grissom back there now. Grissom, of course, is on the lead lap as well. They're battling for 11th position. Right now, Steve Grissom has it. Hamilton trying to take it away. Jimmy Spencer got tired back on his car, and he's running strong there again. But Jimmy's uh, several laps down. In fact, he's two laps down in 19th position. Grissom goes very high and opens the door for Hamilton to make the move. And we see Kyle Petty's car with Todd Bodine in it. That car is seven laps down now as a result of making a driver change in the green flag conditions. So he's back in 28th position. He's also, we understand, that he's had some overheating problems with the engine of the Mel Yellow Pontiac. Here's a battle for eighth, ninth, and tenth, Benny, involving Harry Gant. Harry Gant is running eighth, and uh, ninth has been contested pretty strongly right now between Kenny Schrader, the green and white 25, and Ted Musgrave in the Family Channel, the blue and red 16. And Daryl Walter and Ricky Rudd, both those cars lapsed down, making unscheduled pit stops. Well, Daryl is one lap down in 14th position. Rudd is three laps down. That's right, Daryl did not make an unscheduled stop. Yeah. Ricky Rudd is the car that made the unscheduled pit stop. Right. That tire. Schrader finally takes his spot away from Musgrave. Darrell Walton reported to his pit crew early in the race that he was having brake problems. Looks like he might have solved those problems on the caution flags. Well, that'll let him cool down and get you a little bit of a buildup. Gives you new life for a little while. For a little while. 
see Ricky Rudge tied forward there. He had the misfortune of cutting a tire and having to make an unscheduled stop. Lost a couple of extra laps in the pits. He's now being shown three laps down in 24th position. Yeah, Rudd. You know, the brakes are so good on these cars anymore that the brakes get so hot they literally melt the tires. Bill Weber pointed out on Ricky Rudd's car. Dick Crickle just pulled the grand it looked like some smoke from the rear of that car. He might have a gearing trouble, rear gearing burnout. There he again, being shown in eighth position. Continues to make it climb slowly and steadily toward the front. Bobby Hamilton, as we watch him go down the racetrack. And Bill Elliott, the 11th car, and Earnhardt, sixth spot. Elliott in sixth, Earnhardt in seventh. How many times has Earnhardt spun today, Ned? Twice? Two. Yeah, he's, he has spun twice. 360s. A couple of 360s, and he's still in the lead. Now, he did a couple of 360s at different times, at 360, and then later on another 360, and here he is, seventh spot in the lead lap. There we see Bobby Hamilton in the 40 car with Kendall Oil car as Spencer gets a little out of shape corner trying to get alongside Musgrave so Hamilton will try to go on the outside you know Dick Brooks who used to drive and is a, been a radio commentator for the last several years bought half interest in that 40 car and you know this is Brooks bought half interest in car safety yeah picked up speed yeah don't know if Dick had anything to do with it I, I'm sure he'll take credit for it yeah but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Dick was a good driver he's a multi-car owner dealership Car, car dealership on I should say. Lots of racing action to come your way tonight. Coming up later at 8 p.m. Eastern time, the Portuguese Grand Prix coming your way from Estoril, Portugal. Exciting Grand Prix action. Are you telling me that Damon Hill flipped on Friday? Had a spectacular flip. Uh, there's a look at qualifying. Berger. 194.720 kilometers Yeah, per folks, hour. that's not mild. That's not an M. That's a K, kilometers per hour. Damon Hill in second. Now, Benny, convert that for me. How fast is that? Fast. <laughs> Real fast. <laughs> One of those LRB North Carolina calculators. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> but that's all, all that action's coming your way 8 o'clock tonight at the Grand Prix of Fortune. And Kendall, it looks like he may have... Spencer this time, yes. Gets by the McDonald's car, heads down in turn one. Set the side on the 16 of Musgrave. Good one for Bobby Hamilton. Hamilton. Pardon me, Ned. Yeah, uh, Hamilton is in the 11th position now. He has had a good run. Stay in the lead lap all day. If you just joined in, you want to know where is Bob Jenkins? Well, he had his back, some back surgery a couple of weeks ago, and he'll be... Uh, I don't guess he'll be at North Wilkesboro, but he will be back for Atlanta. Back Boy, this is a tough Atlanta. job we got, Benny. You know, you've had, you've had back surgery, and I just broke something here, it looks like. But, uh, <laughs> you had back surgery, or neck surgery. I had it back in the spring, and now Jenkins. This is a tough job. Now, wait a minute. I, how I, tough it is. I want to back away from you guys. I can't afford to catch anything. You better get back down to the pits. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. After 317 of 500 laps here in the Goodies 500, it is Rusty Wallace, Kenny Wallace, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, and Sterling Marlin. Would you remember when you could buy a soda, drink it, and return? 500. Rusty Wallace being shown as the leader in the Miller Genuine Draft for Thunderbird. And there we can see he's pulled off to a pretty good lead over his brother, Kenny Wallace, driving the Havlin Texaco car. Third place car, Dale Jarrett, the Interstate Battery, and Jeff Gordon. The DuPont Automotive Finishes car is in fourth spot. Gordon beginning to put a little bit of pressure on Jarrett now. I would Gordon imagine old arm is starting to hurt a little bit right now, then. I would imagine. There's the car number four, the Kodak Film Chevrolet, the Morgan McClure efforts. That is being shown in fifth position. The five car, Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's Corn Place car, is a lap down. Two laps down. Yep. Two laps down. 15th position. And next position would be six. That would be Bill Elliott in sixth position. There is Elliott in the Budweiser Ford. And right in front of him, Dale Earnhardt, who's back in seventh spot. 
There's Morgan Shepard. He's one lap down the Sitco car. There's Harry Gale, who's in eighth spot. Will Skull Bandit Chevrolet. The ninth place car is the 25 car, the Kodiak car of Ken Schrader. And there he is, and he and the 43 get together, and the 43 gets his rear bumper knocked off. And uh, what else is going to happen here? Nothing, I hope. Caution is out. Ooh, he got clipped a little bit there by Greg Sachs. And Rusty Wallace was able to get by. But John Andretti, the 43 car, did lose another lap. And you can see where Greg Sachs, and they had mentioned that Sachs got into him, that front end damage was caused by Sachs. There's Sean Andretti. Ninth caution flag today, lap number 329, and Andretti brings the STP Pontiac down pit road after a great qualifying effort to start that car in fourth spot early today. He is now being shown three laps down, will obviously lose another lap as he comes down pit road to get that car worked on. Now the spotter's telling him, go, 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 go. Let's go to Bill Weber, who's in the Dale Jarrett pit. Bill? And, and this is the first pit on the front stretch. It's one of the toughest ones to get out of, but Dale Jarrett is in quickly and is not locked in. He's still waiting for Ken Schrader to just arrive. The car is doing well. Four tires and fuel. Let's go to John with Rusty Wallace. They are once again already done on the right side. Left side going up. Left side just now going up on the 28 cars. Dale Jarrett pulls out of his pit stall, but Rusty Wallace is going to beat him, but Dale Jarrett does beat Kenny Wallace off pit road. And Rusty Wallace crew continues to get to those great pit stops. Put him back out in front. This time, Dale Jarrett's interstate battery crew gets him out in second spot, and Kenny Wallace goes back to fourth. With a jam up over in turn three in the area where John and Reddy spun out. So Car is coming What's out. What's Earnhardt's car doing? Stall. Earnhardt's car. No, I, I think Benny, he, he ran behind a bunch of cars that were almost stopped there, and, and he just pulled down so he wouldn't get run over from the back. And now he pulls back up. Man, I thought his car had <laughs> stalled over there. There we see the 25 car and Andretti come in side by side. Andretti goes around. Rudd goes by and knocks off the rear bumper. And he sits there. It seems like forever. Watch Sachs come from the right of your screen, and he will get part of the front end of the 43 car. The U.S. Air Machine, there he comes, trying to miss him, and just clips part of the front bumper. And here's Ted Musgrave. Now watch from the in-car camera or the roof cam of Ted Musgrave. Well, you have to make that decision quick, too, once you run up there and you see something sitting right there in front of you, or a 3,500-pound automobile, and you've got to turn that wheel quick. That's Robbie Loomis and the crew working on the STP Pontiac of John Andretti as we are under caution here for the ninth time today. And yes, let's take a break while we can under caution as you watch the Budweiser crew, Mike Beam and company. Great crowd on hand. Back with more in just a moment. Flag today here in the Goodies 500 NASCAR Winston Cup event. Rusty Wallace still being shown as the leader. Caution brought out by the spin. Of the car number 43, John Andretti, who has been in the pits now for an additional three laps. ESPN Shop Talk coming up following our broadcast of the Goodies 500. And I think this Shop Talk is Eli Gold and myself. Betty Parsons. Yeah. Don't want to miss that. No, what are no. you selling? Beats me. It'll be good, though. I guarantee you it'll be good. Probably pecan pies and sub sandwiches. <laughs> you know, well, probably got some clothing in there, too, every now and then. But, uh, Stay tuned for Shop Talk with Eli and Benny, and that'll be coming up after the conclusion of our coverage from Martinsville this afternoon. The light is out atop the Pontiac Pace car, which means, Jerry? Green flag. This is a test. Oh, okay, okay. You okay. passed. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> I noticed the light came on, and I had a pencil, and I was thinking green flag. Got it. The signal was out one lap to go last time by, and Doyle Ford has the green flag in his right hand. Waiting for Elmo to scoot out of the way, which Elmo does very efficiently. And here they come down out of turn number four, and the green waves were back to racing at Martinsville. Hey, that boy sounds familiar. <laughs> Jenkins, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, Bob, how you doing? 
Well, I'm doing pretty good. I, I've always enjoyed and looked forward to coming to Martinsville, but I've never missed it as much as I do now because I'd love to be there with you. Well, we'd love to have you here, Bob. Hurry back to us and uh, so I can get out before I have to catch something surgical. You guys already have three going in the booth. I need to get back to the pits before I get operated on two. Well, you guys <laughs> are doing a great job. I've had a house full of company since about lap 100, and I'm going to have to catch up here now on what's going on. But uh, uh, so what I've heard sounded really, really good. I guess Rusty is uh, leading, and Dale Jarrett's running second. Huh? Yeah, we ought to spin, Bob, up on turn four. Ricky Rudd goes around. No caution. Yeah, now the caution comes out. Steve Grissom also, I think, spun in the Diamond Ridge car. Ricky Rudd got hit from behind up there. You see the damage in the left in the driver's side door. Is, and apparently, we are told the 27 car hit the car number 29. Jimmy Spencer getting in to Steve Grissom. And Ricky the car Rudd number got 10. caught up in it. Exactly, Ned. Yep. Let's watch there, Spencer. And there's the 29. And Spencer yep. goes up, and makes contact with the 29. The 10 car Rudd backs off, and Michael Walter runs in the back of him. So that will bring out the caution flag for the 10th time today. Let's check in with John Kernan. Hey, Bob Jenkins. Hey, John. Hey, it's great to hear you. I'm, I'm sorry you feel bad, and we miss you all here, but you know, since you've been gone and Jerry's been in the booth, I'm in the high rent district. I get a lot of air time now. You get more than your normal 23 <laughs> seconds on camera. I'm yeah, really no kidding. So, so now you're going to be back when, Atlanta? Yeah, I'll be back by Atlanta. I wish I could come back next week, but I'm not going to get doctor's release until after that. So one more race for you guys. Okay, hey, maybe you could be in the pits with me at Atlanta, and Jerry could still do the booth. What do you think? Doesn't sound like a good idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dog on it. Hey, Bob, hurry back. We miss you. We certainly wish you a speedy recovery. Well, thanks very much. Uh, thanks, everybody, that, uh, that's written everything. I really appreciate hearing from them. And we'll be back with more from the Goodies 500 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia after this. John Kernan, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, and yours truly, Jerry Pine, bringing you live coverage of the Goodies 500. Rusty Wallace still out front. Dale Jarrett second, Jeff Gordon third, Kenny Wallace fourth, Dale Earnhardt now up to fifth place. He had a great pit stop during that caution when they all made pit stop, so he's up there banging on the 28 car. Trying to move on the inside, trying to take away that fourth position. This is the father step of Lee argument today. Yes, it is. The sixth car behind Erdhardt is Mark Martin. He is two laps down, being shown now in 16th position. Mark made a green flag pit stop. He had gone a lap down on the racetrack. His car just wasn't handling quite right. Then he made a green flag pit stop and lost another lap. And since then, has been two laps down. Take a look at Kenny. He started back in 12th, now being shown in fourth position. Was as high as second for a period of time behind his brother Rusty. And Earnhardt pulled on the inside, trying to take that spot away. Yeah, it doesn't look like that set of tires that Kenny has on now are quite as good as the ones he had before. As Earnhardt gets on the inside, Kenny's car pushing up a little bit in the turns, and Earnhardt takes over the fourth position. Earnhardt holds four spot, but Dale Jarrett not letting Rusty Wallace get away at all. They're staying about two, two car lengths apart. With slightly over 150 laps to go here in the Goodies 500. Well, I expect they'll have another pit stop that they'll have to make. They had what, about 170 laps to go when they made this last pit stop. They might could go that far on fuel. I don't know. Let's check in the pits with John Kernan. John? Jerry, I just checked with Larry McReynolds. He says the problem with their car, the 28 car, is it takes a lot of green flag laps for that car to get going. In other words, it's fairly tight right now. And uh, with that full load of fuel, of course, they had pitted earlier. Car is just a little bit too tight. But he says the longer they run in this green flag session, the faster that Texaco Haviland Ford is going to become. 
Still in our auto light field summary. Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, front two. Jeff Gordon back in third. Earnhardt is fourth. Fifth is Kenny Wallace. We might mention the sixth place car is Bill Elliott. We're watching the auto light field summary. There are 12 cars on the lead lap. You saw you Harry Gant fans. He is in eighth position. There is a look at Harry Gant, and he's moving in on the seventh place car, which is Sterling Marlin. Mark Martin was in front of these cars just a couple of laps ago, but Mark, the gentleman he is, moved over and let him go because they were racing for position. No driver out there more considered than Mark Martin. When cars, if he's a lap down, he gives them the racing room they need. Even when he's racing for the lead, he still is very considerate of his fellow man. Have to watch these cars go down the back right away. We'll go back up to the leader. show you that Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett not much has changed. Rusty still has about a three car length advantage over the 18. Goes by the Brad T car number 52 there driving for Jimmy Means. Brad of Johnson City Tennessee. Well a little bit of bumper tag a little bit of touch and go there out of turn four. And we're told that they have some mono binoculars on from the NASCAR booth watching these guys shuffle back in the pack. Well, they've gotten together a couple of times when we say they, uh, Steve Grissom and Jimmy Spencer, have uh, had a couple of bumping deals here today, and I believe at Darlington they also had a had a situation when, uh, when Spencer was knocked out of the race down there. They had tanks coming off of turn four, so I don't know what's going on here. Never see Grissom has been able to pull away from Spencer. And Steve Grissom is the last car on the lead lap. He is in the 12th position. And here's a battle for ninth and 10th. Our pole sitter, Ted Musgrave, the Family Channel Ford, Jack Roush Racing Machine. He's right in front of the car number 40. Good run for Bobby Hamilton, the Kendall sponsored Pontiac. He's got all kinds of sponsors. He's got Kendall. He's got the uh, Action Furniture by Lane. Zippo someplace on that car. Ted Musgrave, three poles in 1994, two at Richmond and one here in Martinsville. They go by Brad Teague. Darrell Wolf, the Western Auto Car, been fighting a Neil Hanlon race car all day long. Plus, Plus, looks not like having, Plus not having brakes there for a while. Yeah, that's right. He didn't have brakes for a while. Looks like he's got the car handling a little bit better now than he did at the beginning. Car number 28 apparently starting to come into its own. We heard uh, that the car, as the tires got a little warm and began to wear, that the car would really start to come to the racetrack, or the racetrack would come to the race car. Well, some of our observers have been monitoring the 28 car, the conversation between Kenny and the crew, and Kenny told the crew just a couple of laps ago, hey guys, the car is getting better. We're back in the ballpark again, but now, the problem is he has to get by Earnhardt to get back up and race with those fellas that he's been racing with, Jeff Gordon and the 18 car. Earnhardt has worked awfully hard to get back up in the top five. It's not, it's not going to make it easy for anyone to get around him. And especially after the 28 car bumped him early in the race and spun Dale Earnhardt out. Obviously unintentional. Then he was forced high in turn two by a gut tire on the Rick Mass car, which nearly put him in the wall and able to be able to make a, a stop later on to get some of the sheet metal pulled away. But there's a the man they're chasing right now. Rusty Wallace, the Village Annual and Draft Ford Thunderbird driver, leading the way here after 362 laps. Back in a moment. Is this your idea of excitement? Let me tell you about exciting, okay? Driving around a racetrack at over 200 miles an hour, that's exciting. These are just flakes. Well, what do you think? These are really good. They're crispy, too. Really? Yeah, they're mighty good even with nothing on them. What, what are they? Hey, Charlie. Yeah. 
Kellogg's Corn Flakes? <laughs> How could I be so dumb? You got 500 miles to so think about it. To the goodies 500 from Martinsville Speedway in Martinsville, Virginia. Rusty Wallace has led 251 laps. Coming up later tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, NFL Prime Time returns for its eighth season. Chris Berman and Robin Roberts provide the most complete NFL wrap-up program on television at 7 o'clock tonight, NFL Prime Time. Join Boomer and Robin Roberts. And of course, following that, our Formula One coverage, the Portuguese Grand Prix from Estoril, Portugal. That's coming up at 8 o'clock Eastern Time tonight, right here on ESPN. Rusty Wallace continues to lead. We've got a 10 car length lead over Dale Garrett right now. And we'll show you who's right behind Rusty. Nobody. <laughs> you said right behind him? Nobody. Oh. Right. Well, you got that right. The next closest car is Dale Jarrett, who happens to be running in second position. The Interstate Battery Chevrolet. What a good run he's had today with a broken wrist. And there's Jeff Gordon right behind him. The three car deal, Earnhardt, is next. There he is. And not too far behind Earnhardt is Kenny Wallace in the 28 car. There he comes in the picture. And not too far behind these guys is Bill Elliott, the Budweiser Ford. And then behind him is the Terry the Body Kellogg Corn Cornflake Chevrolet. Now Terry gives a couple of laps down. He is being shown in 15th position right now. There's Rick Cameron on top of the Terry the Body's car. And Sterling Marlowe will be next. He is in seventh position in the Kodak Film Chevrolet. There's Bucky Sterling. They call a 500 winner. Rick Sachs is next in the U.S. Air Ford, car number 77. He's uh, nine laps down in 28th position. He's been in a couple of those scrapes out there, as you can see. Harry Gant, the eighth place car, is next to Skull Bandit in his last run here at Martinsville. And the car number seven started on the front row today. And the XI Battery Sport Thunderbird. Jerry, he's three laps down in 20th position. Has made a couple of green flag pit stops. He just passed Mark Martin a couple of laps ago. And Martin follows it. And Mark is two laps down in 16th spot. And there's a car that's also in the lead lap. Bobby Hamilton, the Kendall Oil car, in ninth spot. Darrell Waltrip, the car number 17, the Western Auto Chevrolet head. He's in 13th position. He's a lap down. And then Morgan Shepard right behind him in the set go forward. He is uh, best for position that they're racing for. He's in 14th position. He also is one lap down. They're the only two cars in the field that are one lap down to the 12 that are on the lead lap. There's a 10th place car, Kenny Schrader, the Kodiak Chevrolet. Schrader this year has been running... Very, very consistent. Ted Musgrave still on the lead lap. He's in 11th spot right behind Schrader. They are racing also for position. And Ricky Rudd. The tide ride. And we can see that he's got a little bit of damage to the box today, the tide box. Ricky is 23rd, five laps down. There's the last car on the lead lap. That's Steve Grissom, the Diamond Ridge car. Gary Beckler today, the owner of that car here at the Speedway. There's the straight arrow, Derek Cope. Main and tail shampoo. No, but they got one for people. 21st position, that 12 car is in three laps down. And the car number 43, John Andretti. And he is being shown six laps down in 26 spot. There's Brad Teague in car number 52. He is 15 laps down in 29th position. Brett Bodine goes by him in the Sprager State Ford. He is two laps down in 17th position. And then we see Hud Strickland go by in the smoking joke car. And there's Todd Bodine. And there's Earnhardt. Closed in on the back bumper of the 24 car, trying to take the spot away from Jeff Gordon. That's a race for third. There's second, third, and fourth right there. Three Chevrolets. That Ford is long gone. separation between Rusty Wallace and the second place car there of Dale Jarrett. That's Jarrett Gordon and Earnhardt. Second, third, and fourth. 
And then you, you mentioned the manufacturer championship is the race ending right now. Ford with it on the manufacturer championship for the year. As a matter of fact, if the Chevrolet wins the race, Ford will still win the championship. There's Earnhardt. He's going to try it up on the outside. Wow. Now that is a gutsy move, and I think he's going to make it work, Ned. I think he will, too. And now you'll try Jerry up there again. Well, he hadn't got by going to Tokyo yet. Now he has. They were here two weeks ago testing for two days. The big concern they had with that team was late in the race. The car just got so tight in the middle of the turn, the car wouldn't turn with him. Well, obviously, they've done something, Benny, because the car's working awfully well. Working very well. We saw Brett Bodine in the 26 car slow down the front straightaway. Let's check in with John Kernan. John? Jeff Gordon had just radioed in a couple of laps going for Ray Everham, and all of a sudden the car has gotten very, very loose. Ray told him to just settle down, hang on to it on the final pit stop. They'll tighten him up and try and put him in a position to win this race. And Rusty Wallace, when you look up the rearview mirror, you know what you're going to see? The three car. <laughs> all this work that he's done, he's run so well today. And if, if the race ended, he would gain, what, 10 points on Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, Rusty has led the most laps. Well, if he awarded the points right now, let's take a look and see exactly what Rusty Wallace would have. And Earnhardt would still lead, obviously, but his points lead would dwindle the slightly as Mark Martin, Schrader, and Schrader would pick up a spot. Rudd would lose a spot by virtue of his position on the racetrack, currently 23rd. But Elliott, Darren Walter, and Perry Labonte with all three game positions in the point standing. Dale Jarrett's car has gotten awfully loose, too, as Jeff Gordon gets on the inside of him, and Kenny Wallace is right there. So both those cars are loose right now. Here comes Kenny. He's on the inside. Looks like he might take the spot away. That is the race for third, fourth place. Kenny Wallace has it, puts Jarrett back to fifth. So now it's Wallace, Earnhardt, Gordon, Wallace, and Jarrett. And the other Wallace, I believe, has just blown an inch, and that's Mike Wallace in the Heilig Myers Ford is pulling in on the back stretch. A lot of smoke coming from his car number 90. He's going behind the wall and apparently out of the race. He was running back in 18th position just three laps down after having some trouble early on. Now, if we stay green, they will need one more pit stop, at least one more, at least one more scheduled pit stop for the lead. That's exactly, I would think so. John Kernan, what do you think? One more pit stop scheduled? Yeah, but Benny, that's what uh, we're figuring down here is one more pit stop. Something interesting, John Gelser, who listens on the uh, scanner for me, was monitoring Jeff Gordon right after Earnhardt passed him. Jeff keyed his radio and, and told Ray Abernathy, he said, I don't know how he does it. Ray Abernathy came back on and said, that's why he's the champion. You'll be the champion one day. I wouldn't argue with that. Not at all. Last week at Dover, Delaware, Dale Earnhardt started 37th on the field and finished second. Today, he started way up front. He started 20th today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You consider that he started 37th and Darrell Walton started 35th and finished third. The experience does pay off. Approaching the 400 lap mark here at Martinsville Speedway. 391 laps are in the books and Rusty Wallace continues to lead over Dale Earnhardt. Back with more after this. Rusty Wallace continues to lead. He moves in on heavy lap traffic. Jimmy Spencer is there and he's right behind Jeff Bodine in the Exide Ford. Dale Earnhardt's gaining on Rusty Wallace. Of course, being in this traffic is hurting Rusty right now and allowing Earnhardt to chop off some of that distance, but he has picked up a couple of seconds on him in the last 10 laps. Bodai being shown in 18th spot, four laps down. Spencer, who was even further back, he is being shown back in the 21st spot, some six laps back. And Rusty goes on the inside of Bodai. Looks like he's going to put him yet another lap down. And he does. Man, that Rusty Wallace gets his car working at this racetrack so well. It's incredible. 
You know, when we left yesterday at the end of Anna Rain delay, we had a late model stock car event. When we got ready to leave, it was just about dark, and they were still working on the part of the two down there. They had to hood up. We got here this morning about 20 after 7. They were down there working on that car number two with the hood up. So they might have stayed all night. <laughs> for all we know, but it does pay off as Jeff Bodine comes down pit road for what should be his final pit stop. They will change the right side and left side tires. The four tire stop there for Paul Andrews, Danny Glad, and company. Here's uh, Bill Elliott about to go around Dale Jarrett for the fifth place. Jarrett's car is getting looser and looser. Meaning his arms getting tighter yeah, and tighter. Yeah, yeah, I would say that that has a great deal to do with it. He just joined us. Dale Jarrett crashed last week at Dover and fractured his, his left wrist right then. Yes. It's in, in some type of cast that is flexible enough to let him race, but we know that it's got to be a very tiresome thing. He saw an orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Al Moretz, who fitted him with a rubber cast, a rubber splint to help support it, but that's the navicular bone, the base of the thumb. And then, as they always told you, and I went down and told him earlier, he can't move that wrist without significant pain. And he's losing the other spot as Sterling Marlin goes by. That's for the sixth spot. Now Dale Jarrett back in seventh position. Let's say hello to Dick Pauling down in South Carolina. A guy used to race with us many years ago. Who's in intensive care in a hospital down there. And we also want to uh, pass along the fact that Earl Moss. Now, a lot of race fans might not remember Earl Moss, but I remember him very well. I raced against him many, many times. A great short track driver. Passed away on Friday this week, and our condolences to his family. And I'm told that Ricky Rudd is having some problems. He's had a couple of bang ups out there today and knocked some of the pounds out of his car and he's being affected by the fumes so Dick Trickle is standing by to get in the tide ride if Ricky Rudd and the caution flag should come out. Thank you for our Allied Signal Fram field summary. See where your favorite driver is. There are 12 cars being shown still on the lead lap. The last car to lead lap would be Steve Grissom. And Rusty Wallace is up beside of him right now, Jerry. About to put him a lap down. Yeah, running in the seventh position, eighth position. And he's closing on Dale Jarrett. You see Jerry just four or five car lengths in front of Harry again. Now five car is between Harry and Dale, but Four 
Jerry again is just about called Dale Jarrett for what spot? Seven? Seven to eight. Right. Dale is seven and Harry is eight. But they run behind the Jeff Bodine car back in 20th spot. There's the interval back to fifth. Elliott some 10 seconds behind Rusty Wallace. Only three and a half back is Earnhardt. That 11 seconds that Bill Elliott is behind is about a half a lap or just a fraction of over half a lap. They're running about 21 and a half seconds. Out here again begins to move on the inside of Dale Jarrett, and Dale's pretty helpful to do much about it. Car getting very loose, and obviously got to be getting fatigued driving mostly one-handed throughout most of the day. This is a tough racetrack to, to drive uh, that way. Probably is the toughest track on the circuit as far as being able to use your hands and have 100% uh, in those hands. Because you turn the steering wheel here more than any other racetrack, and turning to 2,000 times at least. Harry Gant was able to get by Dale, but he got slid high in turn four. And Dale thought about going back by him, but he did not. Harry Gant has taken over that spot. Laps are winding down here at Martinsville Speedway. 417 are in the books of 500. Rusty Wallace, our leader. Dale Earnhardt runs in second place. Back in a moment. led 317 laps en route to a victory in the Haynes 500. He has now led 306 laps in today's event, the Goodies 500. Now, where's the second place car? There comes Dale Earnhardt in the car number three. Going by Ted Musgrave, the Family Channel car. Ted is lap down now. He's still running good, but he's, he's a lap down now. He's in the 11th position. Battle heating up between the fourth, fifth, and sixth place cars. Yeah, Bill Elliott trying to pass Kenny Wallace on the outside. That is fourth, fourth position. Sterling Marlin right behind him in sixth position. And looks like Sterling is going to take that spot away from Kenny Wallace. It looks that way. Elliott is now fourth. This is the battle for fifth. Sterling Marlin. Kenny Wallace back in sixth spot. I believe that's the highest Elliott's been today. He's now being shown in the top five in fourth position. So the back end kick out on the 28 car. Looks like he's getting just a little loose as he comes off the corner. Average speed was 79, a little over 79, and we're just a little over 76 miles per hour. About 20 to 25 laps away from what would be the scheduled final pit stop here, Colt. Around lap 450, we're on 428 right now, so that could be the deciding factor. We've seen some great pit work today. Good pit stops uh, with the Miller Genuine Draft crew, Rusty Wallace. Good pit stops for Dale Jarrett, the Interstate Batteries team. Likewise, the Goodrich team, we've seen some good efforts. There's the car number 28 that's been, uh, I'm sure a lot of these guys are going to be glad to be able to get some fresh tires on. Oh, well, I guarantee they are. Any more Mr. Cup racing, it's seldom that the cars run from the entire gasoline stop and the tire stop. And uh, they're accustomed to going in every few laps, putting on new tires. And they have, haven't had that luxury in the last little bit. They ever see the 41 car. He's on those fresh tires we just talked about as he passes Harry Gant and goes on. It doesn't make, as we pointed out earlier in the race, there's not two or three seconds of lap difference like it was at Darlington a few weeks ago when you put on new tires over old tires, but it, it's about close to a second a lap from three quarters to one second per lap difference in new tires and those that are worn down. There are nine cars in the lead lap. Kenny Schrader is the final car in the lead lap, and he is not far in front of our leader, Rusty Wallace. Harry Gant 
Down in one and two, he's running around on the bottom of the racetrack. He, well, I guess he tried to run on the bottom that time, but the car kicked it up. Bill Jarrett has fallen back to seventh spot. Like that eighth. Eighth yeah. spot. Yeah. Dan is in seventh spot. Kenny Wallace has fallen back to sixth spot. Kenny Schrader in ninth position, and not far behind him comes our leader. As Rusty Wallace came by there. Going Earnhardt. We'll just hold it here and let the whole field go through. Jeff Gordon going by. He's in third spot. Watching for Rusty Wallace to come right at you. There's Wallace running right behind the Western Auto Chevy of Darrell Waltrip. Going back in 13th position, one lap down. Now that would put him two laps down unless he gets around. Rusty Wallace trying for his fifth straight Martinsville race finish in the first two spots. Last four events are he is finished either first or second. Now that is consistent. That is phenomenal. Let's check in with John Kirby. Well, Jerry, right about now, Dale Earnhardt trails Rusty Wallace by a little over three and a half seconds. If we anticipate going green the rest of the way, that means the race could possibly be won right here in the pits. And it's going to be tough for the three crew to make up three and a half seconds right here on pit road going up against the two crew. Another thing is Andy Petrie says they have to wait and see when Rusty pits, see if he does two tires, four tires, or just fuel. Let's go down to Rusty's pit where Bill Weber is standing by. Well, John, the crew is meeting right now. The plan now is that this race stays green and will be fuel only for the Miller Genuine Draft Ford. They will not change tires. One crew chief told me Rusty doesn't kill you on this track. He finesses you to death. And that's what he's doing right now. Wow. That's kind of strange. They're putting those tires on. Well, that might be a little bit of a gamble. Well, Rusty's got to gamble to try to win a championship. What does he have to do? Well, he's got to gain 38 points per race, and Earnhardt needs to finish sixth or better. What's that tell you about uh, him running second today? He's running second. That means that after this race, if things were continue the way they are, that Earnhardt would have need to finish about eighth or ninth or better in the remaining races. Well, Rusty's won two of the last four. He could make it three of the last five if he holds on today. We'll come back with the final round of pit stops from Martinsville Speedway in just a moment. Stay with us. What would be the final scheduled pit stop for our lead cars and now some of the crew members climbing up, putting one foot up on the wall, trying to decipher. They realize that that race could be won or lost in the pit. i tell you what, if Rusty Wallace just puts fuel only, that's quite a gamble. Still has about 50 laps to go. It looks like he got a little loose as he came off the fourth corner that time. But if he does it, then can the others afford to take the time to change tires? Exactly. It's uh, interesting. They're, they'll sort of wait and see what he does, I guess. We saw a gamble at Charlotte early this year, a sort of a Hail Mary, if you will, when Ray Everham decided to put two tires on Jeff Gordon's car, and uh, that was just the key to get that car to victory lane. This is a battle for position between these two cars. They are a lap down. That's Bobby Hamilton in the 10th position of Ted Musgrave in 11. And Rusty Wallace is on pit road. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, all of a sudden, the Miller Jr. draft team sprung into action. They're going to go for tires this time in appearance and add the fuel. So they are going to pit now on lap 448. More fresh clear tires and enough fuel for Rusty to go the distance. He's working on the left side tires. They've got them on. Go back to the air ridges. Tighten the foot nuts. Drop the track and Rusty is away. 18.4 seconds for Rusty Wallace. Now then, we'll learn or maybe just put fuel in his car. Well, because he can probably do that in five or six seconds. Yeah, Rusty is a lap down right now on that four tire change. He went a lap down. Earnhardt still out there. He's beaten today for the first time. So he's got those five points. So now, Rusty Wallace would only gain 10. I was wrong a moment ago. Rusty would have gained 15 because Earnhardt had not led the race, but now he has. So it's just a 10 point advantage. 
if Rusty wins and Earnhardt finishes his second. Exactly right. Yeah. Rusty's led the most laps, so he gets that five bonus points. Each of them have led. Now watch Rusty Wallace trying to get on the pit road here out of turn four. Watch Kenny Schrader's car on the inside. Wow. Rusty, that's close. That was close. Now, I'll tell you what. Rusty bragged on his sponsor, on his spotter at Bristol. That might be the best job the spotter has done all day long because it was awfully close to Rusty Wallace having an accident. But the Don Miller up high in the sky said, don't turn now because Schrader's beside of you. Riding along with Rusty Wallace right now. And we are told Dale Earnhardt will pit in the next four laps. And just a few laps ago, Mark Martin came in. Just a little bit ago, we will show you that action. This is from the fly cam or whatever we, crew cam. James Entz, the front tire changer for Mark Martin's crew wearing the crew cam and Helping with the left front tire, Steve Meal, he puts it on. Cleans off the grill and away goes. Sterling Marlin is in the pits. John Kernan. It looks like it's gonna be right side tires only and fuel for Sterling Marlin. Lug nuts are tight and they drop the jack and Sterling, who has shown up on the board right then at fourth place, is down and away after a two tire change. Still waiting for Dale Earnhardt to make a pit stop. Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott. That's how they stand right now. One, two, three. Now, if you wonder what position Rusty Wallace is in, he is in ninth position. He is a lap down. He's about the length of the straightaway, or about half the length of the straightaway, I should say, behind Dale Earnhardt. So if he can catch Earnhardt and pass him, he'd get back in the lead lap. There you see the difference between Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. Rusty is running much faster than Earnhardt now with those new tires on. Well, the Goodrich crew originally did not have any tires rolled up to the wall, and now they suddenly scramble around and they roll some tires up toward the wall. They are all standing there at the end of pit row. That's the championship pit position. The champion gets to pick first, the big series champion. I believe they're going to have to seriously look at putting on at least outside tires like Sterling Marlin did. They're, I'm sure they're clocking that four car now to see how it affects him with those two tires. And here's Earnhardt. He slows down out of turn four. It comes down at 35 miles an hour. And Dell Earnhardt will be making his final pit stop. It is now or never. Jeff Gordon is our leader. Let's go to John Kernan. 35 miles an hour, Dale Earnhardt will pull in. It's going to be left side tires only. And Chuck McMeyer said they only needed about two or three seconds to get enough fuel in the car. A little problem getting the left rear off. Left front is already on left rear now. Waiting, waiting, getting the final luck. That's tight. Dale Earnhardt is down and away a little over 12 seconds. Okay, now Rusty Wallace went past him. Rusty Wallace is in front of him as far as position is concerned. Rusty Wallace is now back in the, on the lead lap as a result of... Earnhardt going into the pits, so if a caution should come out now, it really wouldn't hurt him that bad. There's Rusty Wallace making his way on the inside of Darrell Waltrip. And they're having a driver change there. Let's go to Bill Weber. Ricky Rudd told his crew he was being overcome by fumes. They weren't going to make this change unless they got a caution. So apparently Ricky felt bad enough that he was going to get out of the car. Dick Trickle has gotten in. They've added some additional padding. They'll change four tires, throw in the fuel, and Dick Trickle will drive the tie forward to the checkered flag. Oh, Morgan Shepard spins up in turn three and four. No oh. caution yet. Yeah, now caution is out. Now, Jeff Gordon did not pit. Bill Elliott didn't pit. Kenny Wallace didn't pit. Harry Gant had just come out of the pits, and so it's going to help some and hurt some. That's for sure. But, but really, truly, Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt, they might stay on the racetrack because they just pitted, and the other guys would have to start behind them. So seven cars in the lead lap, including the two and the three, which were in sixth and seventh, just having pitted. They probably will stay out as caution comes out for the 11th time today due to the spin by the car number 21 of Morgan Shepard. I think Harry Gant had just come out of the pits on the back stretch, and uh, they were... They got a number of cars got a little tight coming into turn three. Okay, the leaders are coming into the pits. There's Morgan Shepard. I mean, <laughs> Jeff Gordon and Bill Elliott. Let's go to the pits. Well, Jeff Gordon showing a lot of damage on the left side, but it certainly hadn't affected the car much. Remember, the car had gotten very loose. It's a four-tire change. 
and fuel for Jeff Gordon. It looks like a little bit of a problem with the right rear tire. They're having a problem as Dale Earnhardt comes down. He'll likely take on right side tires. They've got a problem. Apparently, a lut nut is stuck on the right rear tire or the air wrench. The air gun had gone bad. Now, they're now Jeff Gordon goes to pull away. They don't have all the lug nuts down as a 28 car leaves pit road, goes down. They don't have all the lug nuts off the left side. Oh, what a bad break. Jeff Gordon motioning to the team. Come on, come on. They're trying to dog. Now the pace car for the passion. And let's see, Jeff Gordon heads down pit road, and they're going to stop him. Jeff Gordon will lose a lap. Incredible misfortune for Jeff Gordon after just fighting all day, coming in as the leader on lap 462. And uh, problems in the pits cost him a lap. Sounds like he ran it off a lug nut on that right rear and could not get that nut off. Had to bring a wrench over from the, from the front to take it off. Man, tough break for Jeff Gordon. And Laps Rusty Wallace did not make a pit stop. He stayed on the racetrack with those four fresh tires that he changed just a few laps ago. Dale Earnhardt did indeed come back in, so Rusty stayed out. Final laps coming your way from Martinsville Speedway. The NASCAR Winston Cup goodies 500 winds down. Back with more short track racing action in just a moment. Stay with us. A green flag, lap 468, 32 laps remain here in the goodies 500. And Rusty Wallace maintains the lead, but a battle for second place. Earnhardt on the inside of Elliott. Now Earnhardt did come back in, get those right side tires. He had taken on lefts during a green flag pit stop. Came back in and got right side tires. Rusty did not make a pit stop, as Benny pointed out, just before we went to break. So don't know how much of a difference that might make. Earnhardt takes over the second spot. Rusty Wallace, a leader behind him, a lap down being shown the car number four. That is Sterling Marlin, who is in seventh position, one lap down. I think Sterling put it before the caution flag. That's the reason he's a lap down. He did indeed. Came in and took on two right side tires. Likewise, Harry Gant pitted before the caution came out. He's being shown a lap down in the car number 33. Kenny Wallace, the fourth place car in the car number 28. Behind him is Dale Jarrett in position on the racetrack. He is in fifth. So right now, Rusty Wallace has about 15 more laps on those tires than Dale Earnhardt does. One, one second interval with Wallace and Earnhardt, and one car separates them. Lap car of Sterling Marlin. Sterling Marlin will get out of the way as soon as Earnhardt gets there and starts pressure him just a little bit. Sterling Marlin will get out of the way. I'm sure it will. The chairman of the board of General Motors has to call him. He'll get out of the way. <laughs> 28 laps remain here at Martinville Speedway. Rusty Wallace See? now pulls away. You called it, BC. <laughs> He would have anyway, and just had a sportsmanship. He pulled over, realizing he didn't have a chance to win it. Yes, he would. He wouldn't have stood in Earnhardt's way of getting a shot at a Ford. Rusty tiptoeing off the corner just a little bit. Jarrett came off that second corner of the last lap. Bounce spun out, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He was trying to get by uh, Kenny Wallace. Harry Gant was going by Kenny Wallace. And uh, he gets on by. And Dale was trying to. And he hit the curb down on the inside. Boy, that's what he didn't want to do with that broken wrist. Oh. And Schrader almost got in the back of him. And let me tell you that the 24 car, Jeff Gordon, they were never able to change the right rear tire on his car. They changed all the three other tires, but the right rear is still the same tire that has 170 laps on it. Oh, boy. That, that's probably the worst tire you could have on the race car with a lot of laps on it. Exactly. It's going to spin off those corners. And the interval is half what it was, five-tenths of a second, as Earnhardt now pulls it within a couple of car lengths of Rusty Wallace. Must be a bumblebee in there with Rusty Wallace the way he's fighting that wheel. And look at Earnhardt on the outside. Wow. You can 
that's for sure, and Rusty's going to protect that inside. Here goes Earnhardt again. And moving in on Brad Teague, the car number 52. And the fans are on their feet watching these two wage war, and Earnhardt will try it high once again. He needs to get to the inside, but Rusty Wallace knows that. Rusty's going to protect that inside. And Earnhardt can run any groove he wants to around this racetrack. He has fresher tires. Now, I don't know if, any, if there's a time when, you know, we say that Rusty has 15 or so laps more on his tires than does Earnhardt. Now, is there a time when they might equalize? That the tires might be equal? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And Rusty Wallace's forte all day has been after 15, 20 laps. So in five or 10 laps, if he doesn't start driving away from Earnhardt, we're in for a barn burner for the end of this thing. Yeah. Well, 20 laps to go. And it's been 16 races since Dale Earnhardt has gone to victory lane. The last win, his third of the season, came back in May at Talladega. He tries it again and can't quite make it work on the outside. Boy, Earnhardt is running a great line around this racetrack, going in so wide, but bringing that Chevrolet right down to the bottom of the racetrack. Almost ran in the back of Rusty Wallace at night. Watch as he goes very, very wide in the corner and brings that car down to the bottom and comes off with such a force. guy adjusts as he goes along. He adjusts his line and the way he drives the race car as the car goes on. See how much wider he goes in than Rusty Wallace? Rusty's got to gotta go in low to protect that inside line. Well, Rusty's about as low as you can get. Earnhardt on the outside at turn three, but Rusty on the inside. Earnhardt just can't get any momentum coming off the corner. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get traction up there. You can't plant your foot in it the way that you need to. If you're down like bottom three, most of the time, if you if you can take the car out next to the wall, which Rusty can do while he's leading the race, if you got that line off of the turn, then you can plant your foot in the accelerator and jump right off of there. We're coming off on the high side. You can't quite do that. I know one thing. They're enjoying themselves. Oh, but, yeah, they're having a ball. But there will only be one guy that's really enjoying himself, and that's the guy that wins, because Earnhardt does not like to run second. Neither does Rusty Wallace. Rusty's saying, if he's going to pass me, you got to do it on the outside. I'm not on the curb, but I'm certainly close enough to scare the paint. <laughs> Fifteen laps to go here in Martinsville. Glad to have you with us. John Curtin, Bill Weber, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, and yours truly, Jerry Punch. Bring you to the Goodies 500. And they'll be moving in on some heavy traffic just in about three or four laps. Now, that might be Earnhardt's best opportunity to get down on the inside. Off Rusty is uh, the lap cars. There he tries and looks high again. And Rusty Ooh. gets that thing sideways yeah, again. He did. He did get a loose coming off the turn. And so when he has to go on the outside of cars, Earnhardt might stick up under. Earnhardt tried to stick that nose on the inside that time. Couldn't do it. Tell you what, if you're a young racer around the country, you take note of what you're watching here. Two of the finest in the world going at it. And they haven't touched paint yet. Clean as you can get. Earnhardt waiting for an opportunity. Well, I'm not a bit of uh -oh. <laughs> they, they might have touched paint right there. Well, they bit. might have. I like the way you put that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's 12 right. left to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Rusty still gets him by a car length and a half out of the third. Meanwhile, Bill Elliott runs third. Kenny Wallace is fourth, Dale Jerry fifth, and, Ken and Kenny Schrader is in sixth place. Those are the only cars on the lead lap. Ten to go this time. And look at that, all that competition, all those slower cars right in front of Wallace and Earnhardt. It's Greg Sachs and Michael Waltrip, as those cars are, could certainly play a role in who wins this thing, and they're side by side right in front of them. That is Michael Waltrip and Jimmy Spencer. Looks like this Rusty Wallace right now starting to put that little bit of distance on Earnhardt that he needs to. You know, Earn, yeah, Earnhardt might have used his tires up in that uh, hard drive that he made to try to get up there. He probably has uh, at least sort of e equalized as far as getting them back closer together. Bill Weber. 
Ned, the uh, Miller team down here feels they have an advantage, even though they did not stop. They have four good match tires on that car. And even though Earnhardt stopped under the caution and got two more, they felt down the stretch their tires would be better, and that would help them hold off Dale Earnhardt. Let's go to John. Well, Dale Earnhardt might have used up his tires, but right now the concern from high atop the speedway from the spotter is that right front brake. The spotter has radioed in and told Dale he can see it glowing, so Dale Earnhardt may be out of brakes. He may have just heated him up too much in making that run at Rusty Wallace. Yeah, you can see that rotor was cherry red when Earnhardt went down in the corner, but that's not going to affect the car really and truly. That these uh, brake rotors stay cherry red about all the time anyway. Watch this white front as you go down the corner, and you'll see that that time we can't. From this corner, from this camera, we probably can't. There it is. Yep, it's red in there. There it is. Hot brakes on Earnhardt's good red Chevrolet. And he has about uh, five car lengths to make up with five laps to go this time by. Yeah, he used that race car up a lot. The tires and everything else when he was up there trying to make the pass. That's what he had to do. And Rusty was able to hold him off, and I believe that he'll be able to hold him off now. Wallace has led 362 of 494 laps at Martinsville Speedway, trying to pick up his eighth win here in 1994. That is phenomenal. I really felt like that Rusty would have a, a setback going to Ford this year, switching from a Pontiac, but uh -uh. last year he won 10 races, and he run on line to do the same thing again this year. Sure is. That's a V8. If he makes it back to the Checkered flag. First. Well, Bobby Labonte slowing the match last car down on the inside. Here we go. Next time by for Rusty Wallace. Drew now standing up on the pit wall, watching anxiously, hoping that Rusty can hang on for two more circuits. Joe Nemechek moves over. Let's both those cars go by. White flag in the air. When you talk about that right rear on Jeff Ford's car, Ned, look, he's just in front of Rusty Wallace to be lap. Yep. Back to the 11th spot. He's the last car on the lead lap. But the final lap at Martinsville Speedway, Rusty Wallace. Coming to turns three and four, and Wallace will pick up his fourth victory at Martinsville, his eighth in 1994. He takes the checkered flag and waves to the crowd his third win on the short tracks here this season. And that, of course, will tie up the manufacturer's title for Ford for the second time in three years. Let's go down to the pits and Bill Weber. Bill? Well, we're in the Miller Genuine Draft Pit. Buddy Parrott is having a, a final word and a laugh with Rusty Wallace. Congratulations. Well, thanks a lot, man. No, Rusty did a, he did a heck of a job. You know, Dale Earnhardt's one tough customer, but uh, you know, when it's all said and done, Rusty Wallace is going to be a great champion one of these days. <laughs> he, he came in, Earnhardt did, for tires under caution, and you guys stayed out. Well, we stayed out because we needed track position. We had that flat tire. That was our decision. We made the decision. Rusty told me we'd stay out. So, uh, man, it was a great, great deal. He held on with 15 lap tires that were hotter than, you know, it, but maybe that was a difference. I don't know. What's that T-shirt say? Huh? What's that T-shirt you're holding there say? It says 1994 NASCAR Manufacturers Championship. Rusty Wallace brought that home along with the checkered flag today. Indeed, they should be proud of that. Rusty led 367 of 400 or actually 500 laps. He's got to say 500 laps. It's over with. So 367 of 500 laps. There were six cars in the lead lap. Nine different leaders. 18 lead changes. And there comes what has to be an exhausted but exuberant Rusty Wallace. Give me a rank. Don't you know he is exhausted is right. I think that's the key word. You got to be just totally exhausted. You also got a championship for the boys. He's not acting like it, though, is he? Pretty, pretty spy looking there. Getting wiped off there and getting ready to jump out. Let's take a listen. It's going up, All right? Let's go down to John Turner. Well, Rusty Wallace has climbed from his car. Rusty, 
Yeah, look at that. The manufacturer's champion. They already got the T-shirts. Did you have that in the car with you today? No, I just wanted to win this thing for Ford, you know, with eight victories this year. All the other guys said we couldn't do it. I'm glad we did. T talk about those last few laps you racing there with Earnhardt. I mean, he, he could have bumped you and taken you out, but uh, you guys raced pretty clean. Yeah, we raced good. It was a good race. Uh, I am a little tired, I'll tell you that. I raced hard today. Got a little warm out there, and, er and Earnhardt did a great job. But uh, so Ford Thunderbird, Troy Miller, Daniel Draft, and that mobile oil man running good on these high conditions. It was great. Goodyear tires are great, perfect. The spark plugs are super. Bosch, just like to thank everybody. Tell you what, Rusty, take my headset and my microphone. There's somebody who's uh, we've got a hookup with who would like to talk to you for right now, okay? Lean up against the car. Hello. Rusty. Yes. Hey, congratulations, man. It was a great race. Thank you very much, man. This Ernie. Ernie. Buddy, we're pulling for you, man. I'll tell you what, your car ran good today. Yeah, they, Kenny did a great job. Yeah, well, hey, we're all talking about you. We're all looking forward to getting back. Uh, Man, you're making it easy for me right now. When you were around, it was hard, boy, I tell you. Yeah, I tell you, we had some great races there at uh, Martinsville. I'm going to be at Charlotte, so I'm going to be there to watch you anyway. Well, great, man. It's good seeing you. I tell you what, we're going to we're gonna have a lot more races come Daytona. Is that right? Yeah, I hope so. I don't care if we need to see you out our toes. We're going to be there, man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bill Weber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Rusty, thanks a lot. Well, you couldn't hear, but I'll tell you, Ernie Irvin said he, you drove a heck of a race today, and you did. Congratulations, your well, highest Winston Cup finish. You know, I talked to Ernie before the race started, right before driver's introduction. One thing he said, and I knew what he meant, he said, you know, get after it all day long, Kenny. You got to really get after it. And what I, what I know what he meant was that I had to drive as hard as I could every lap. I was just driving as hard as I could, and Rusty just kept inching away from us there, you know. But the guys gave us great pit stops, and we just had one bad set of tires that dropped us back to about seventh with about 50 to go. But uh, luckily, that yellow come out at the right time, and we ended up fourth. So, uh, I mean, it's a good run. I'll take it. Okay, I know you ha know how to do this. So take this microphone, okay? Take this microphone, okay. and I'm going to give you these headsets, okay? So you listen. Okay. Ernie, are you there? Kenny. Hey, Kenny, buddy. That was a great job today. Well, man, you know, I, I, you finished second. And you won last time here. I finished fourth, so... Uh, you're still, you're still the greatest thing that we should, could be, get back in here. I tell you, you did a great job today. And, um, you know, these guys needed some, some pumping up, so um, I'm glad you did it. Well, thank you. You know, uh, I just want you to know, Ernie, that, man, as soon as you get back, I hope you take a seat out of this race car. I know how hard it is for you, but uh, we all love you. And um, I've been down that road before. You know, I lost the championship in 91 in that Bush Series laid up. So uh, you just stay tough, buddy, because okay. this is a great race car for you, man. Okay, I appreciate it, Ken. You want me to throw? Okay, this is ESPN. I will be back at Martinsville after this message. Tired of driving all over Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana just to find the GM automobile that you want? You don't have to. Wagner Motors in Wauseon is your one-stop shop for general... Now, during that race, spun out a couple times, come back with a great finish, and thought for a minute there you might pull it out. I was going in circles to impress this guy right here, Kix Brooks, and all the country <laughs> music folks back in Nashville. They need a little excitement, but... Uh, I didn't see somebody the... bumping you. I saw you putting a bumper on. That's the last 50. It's time to go, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was a good race. Our car ran good. Uh, like I say, we got a few unexpected spins at the first, but uh, recovered well and ended up pretty good after starting 20th. Hey, I tell you, after that kind of performance as the season's winding down, you got to feel really good about that points championship and tying the king. Well, I... I feel better about it every race, but uh, he's five points here, 10 points there. He's got he's got 15 on us the last two weeks, so Wilson Burr should be ours. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. Well, he finished second, but it certainly wasn't easy. Let me show you what he had to endure today. We're talking about Dale Earnhardt and the Goodrich Chevrolet. Early in the race, lap 35, take a look here. Dale Earnhardt on the inside. He goes by Kenny Wallace, but out of turn four, it's... A little tap, and he does a Joey Chitwood routine. He loops it around, keeps it going. Now, a little bit later on, this incident, lap 78, down in turn one and two. Rick Mast has a tire to go down, gets up into Earnhardt, hits him, spins him around. But he keeps going. Earnhardt's 18th top five finish of 1994. He has one more than Rossi Wallace. Back with more from Martinville Speedway right after this. 
Poly Shades by Minwax. It's a stroke of genius. Poly Shades is rich stain and polyurethane protection in one. Poly Shades gives wood a beautiful protective finish in half the time. Poly Shades by Minwax. This is a bucket of water. And this is the new Goodyear Eagle AquaTread for performance cars. A wide performance tire with twin aqua channels to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction. New Eagle AquaTread, only from Goodyear. When traffic congestion changes, the threats to your car's engine change. That's why Quaker State has engineered intelligent oil. Oil that senses the changing threats in your engine and adapts its own molecular structure for continuous protection. So whenever the driving conditions change, so does Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. Buy a case of Quaker State motor oil and receive an 8-ounce Armor All protectant free. Details for this mail-in offer at participating stores. finest drivers in the world's fastest cars compete tonight in the Grand Prix of Portugal Formula One the art of motor racing only on ESPN back at Martinsville Speedway the goodies 500 is history and Bill Weber is caught up with an exhausted Dale Jarrett well, that's a great way to put it doctor and you would know and uh, you can just go ahead and tell us Dale uh, I know you're whipped yeah, I am. Yeah, I, I wish I'd have had two hands all day long today. Uh, my guys gave me an awfully good race car, and uh, the, the problem came whenever uh, we got in a long run, and you really have to hustle the car then, and uh, I couldn't really do that as good as I needed to, and so uh, we just had to take what we could get, and then I hit the curb with about 20 laps to go, and, boy, that sent a pain I hadn't felt in a while, and so I just backed off and finished it out with one hand. You must have had a great car because you did have a great run, even despite your wrist. Yeah, I had a really, really good car. We were a little bit tight in the center all day, and I could never get that out. And uh, the next to the last set of tires really hurt us. We fell way back, and uh, we tried to adjust on the last stop, but didn't make quite a big enough adjustment. Any prognosis on that? How will it be next week? Any idea? Can't be any worse, I don't think. So uh, that's something to look forward to, and uh, we'll take this same race car to Wilkesboro. So uh, I'm excited about that. Always get a smile from Dale Jarrett, a strong fifth place finish today with a broken wrist. Let's go back up top. And Bill, that was his best short track finish of the 1994 season. We'll be back with more from Martinsville Speedway here at the conclusion of the Goodies 500 in just a moment. Stay with us. I love my new hot ride. Those flames scare the other guys. 5,000 horsepower helps too. Hit a fat bankroll. You know, we've been running Autolite spark plugs forever, but I could rain more money out of someone else. Money's good. My crew burns it. So I tell the guys we're going to run a different plug. They say no. I say I'm the boss. They say Autolite keeps this monster lit. So I tell them I was just kidding. Miller Genuine Draft, the cold one. So you suck me, baby. For those who've discovered its smooth draft taste, the world is a Lord. very cool place. So get out of the old and get into the cold. Every time you cold start your car without slick 50 protection, metal grinds against metal in your engine. With each turn of the ignition, you do unseen damage. Because at cold startup, most of the oil is down in the pan. But Slick 50's unique chemistry bonds to engine parts. It reduces wear up to 50% for 50,000 miles. So get Slick 50 while there's still time. Now get $3 cash back when you buy Slick 50 engine formula at participating retailers. Back in Martinsville Speedway here, the Goodies 500 is history. Take a look at uh, our final unofficial results today. How about Rusty Wallace? He's doing all he can to win the championship, but he looks up at the rear view mirror and then and there's Dale Earnhardt once again. He's always there, it seems like. Rusty Wallace led the most laps, won the race. He gained 10 points on Dale Earnhardt. See there, Jeff Gordon slipped back to 11th place after having his problems. He was one of the front runners for most of the day. 
Stuart Martin with a tough run here today. He is always strong here at the Martinsville Speedway, but uh, not today. Just wasn't his day. And Ricky Rudd's 25th place finish will hurt him in the point standings. And he's had two, four finishes in a row after that great run and win up at New Hampshire.